Mike, thank you. Um, I don't have agenda in front of me, but we're going to continue our discussion on the retail locations, look at some new maps, and then um, spend some time talking about taxes, too. So should we start with maps, or anybody got any opening thoughts, or? Huh? Uh, we can do multiple rounds of public comment, sort of after each topic that we come up yeah. and talk about, when we talk about stuff, and then we'll break and make public comment. Mm -hmm. there, yeah. Yeah, I the mean, orders. If you'd, if you'd like to switch it up and have it as number one, if it may be helpful to know what it, her comments are. Sure, yeah. If you want to start with the public comment, we can do that. We can take any of this out of order. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Please. Testing. Linda Setter, 5th District. Um, where do I begin? Today I received a ballot title and summary for a citizen's initiative for the sole purpose of uh, the retail stores being open, uh, sales and distribution. So the initiative is, the ballot title is an initiative measure to control, regulate, and tax adult use cannabis with Del Norte County. Um, the, f the reason I developed this initiative, citizens initiative, is because the Board of Supervisors went against the voters and um, everybody's dragging their feet. Ballot summary, this ordinance expresses an intention to establish a comprehensive system to legalize, control, and regulate the distribution, testing, and sale of non-medical cannabis. The ordinance lists intentions, including the intent to strictly control distribution, testing, and sale of non-medical cannabis through a system of licensing regulation enforcement, which includes an intention to require track and trace management procedures, child resistance packaging, and comprehensive testing for the pre presence of contaminants such as mold and pesticides. The stated intent of the ordinance includes the sale of non-medical cannabis, would be prohibited by businesses that also sell tobacco or alcohol. That marketing and advertising of non-medical cannabis products would be prohibited to persons under 21 years of age. That access to cannabis would be denied to, be denied to persons under 21 years of age who are not medical patients. And that consumption of cannabis would be prohibited in any public place, unli unlicensed. <coughs> Excuse me. For such use. Um, as stated in the measure, It is the intent of the ordinance to maintain existing laws that make it unlawful to operate a car while impaired by cannabis, to allow public and private employers to enact workplace policies pertaining to cannabis, to require all employers of cannabis businesses to report to EDD within 20 days of employment for child support arrears, to require delinquent supporters fill out necessary forms for the repayment of any arrears, and to require all child support arrears be paid in full before issuance of any license to open a medical or non-medical cannabis business. The stated intent of the ordinance is to allow no more than four retail stores selling cannabis and cannabis products in the county of Del Norte. Pretty much similar to the alcohol rules and planning commission. I, I only see three uh, stores that that uh, sell alcohol. Um, the stated intent of the ordinance is allow no more than four retail stores selling cannabis and cannabis products in the county of Del Norte, and to require that those stores be no more than 2,500 square feet and not be located within 1,500 feet of any school licensed daycare or park. Finally, the ordinance expresses an intention that an additional 2% sales tax on top of the regular sales tax be imposed on the sales of all non-medical cannabis sales to be deposited in the Del Norte County General Fund. That is the citizens initiative that has been developed. It will. Uh, I will be taking this down to the triplicate today 
it will circulate and I will be attaining the necessary signatures. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment now? Actually, um, uh, Ms. Sutter, uh, yes. could you provide a copy of that to, uh, to us? Um, I can provide you a copy of all this. Stuff. Awesome. Um, I'm sorry. If you could. <laughs> I got to hang it out to dry. Uh -oh. <laughs> you can please uh, email me uh, l underscore setter at yahoo.com. I'll be glad to provide you with a copy of both of these things. And uh, the um, the citizens initiative it goes it it goes into further detail, but but uh, the county council did cover all the uh, things that I wrote up and this again is to get the ball rolling for retail uh, stores to open up and sell non-medical ca cannabis as well as medical cannabis so that's you know there's a lot of upset people in our community because first they banned it everybody accepted that then there was no ban and everybody was up in arms about there's no ban oh okay well there's no ban and so we got people that have been selling regular cannabis you know because there was no ban and then they put another ban on it now another ban. <laughs> so it's just not getting done so thank you uh, chair Davis I have a question may I uh, ask a question to Ms. Sutter yes please um, would you have time to walk over to community development and we can make a copy of that yeah I'll and then and then I can make sure that everyone on the on the committee and anyone who wants it I can call over and have them make the copy now if if you have time yeah I'll do that okay thank you thank you Uh, <clears throat> seeing no other public comment at this time. Uh, anybody have any comments on that? You know, I guess if if county council is here, I'd ask you know, um, you know, if we have two ballot initiatives, one for our tax and one for for the, you know on the ballot. You know, I would ask that question. <laughs> I guess I would just say that it seems like it's jumping the gun a little bit. I don't know what most of us feel about that exactly, but I feel like it's <clears throat> somewhat of a jumping the gun idea. Um, we're talking about what the people voted for, but remember 60% of the voters voted for Prop 64 and uh, at least a portion of what some people voted for we're, we're not the county isn't opposing a lot of people who voted for prop 64 just like the fact that they can grow six plants in their residence that is not being changed by the county so a portion of those 60 percent of the people maybe just voted for that um, a portion of those people who voted for that wanted to see proper ordinances put in place so lack of a proper ordinance six plants you're probably well below 60 percent of the people that would vote for something other than that so um, just two thought two cents um yeah i agree with kurt um i i read a copy of linda's um initiative last week on facebook and i was pretty disappointed to see it honestly i think it's um I think it's a huge distraction for the county. I think it's a huge distraction for voters. Um, it's a really incomplete ordinance that will, would create massive problems with community development, enforcement, the business itself. Um, it would be nothing but a total horse crap show, in my opinion, if it passed as it is. Um, it completely negates the intelligent process of creating an ordinance with the public, with staff, with council, making sure everything's legal and enforceable. Uh, ordinance is meaningless if it's not legal and enforceable. Um, it's super destructive, actually, if you have a, an ordinance or initiative that's not legal. <laughs> um, costs the county tons of money. I, I'd like to weigh in. I'm, I'm just going to agree. I'm sitting over here 
I've been on the road for 10 or 11 days. This is my first moment back in, in Delnark County. And uh, I don't know who she is. I didn't know why she was reading. I didn't know if she agreed with it or disagreed with it until her comment at the end. And so my understanding is we are a, a committee tasked with putting together details for an ordinance for the county. That's what we've been asked to do. And so public comment should come up here and give us some ideas, give us some direction, sit, listen to our response, and, and, and participate in the process. That, that's what I would expect from people. And, and that's not what just happened. And so uh, I think that's why these guys who are a little more in the know are saying what they're saying. So that's, you know, I just, we're all here to come up with some ideas and solve the problem, irregardless of what's happening politically in town. Um, I'll, I'll comment a little bit too, um, since Linda's back in the room, she can kind of give it an, I get an idea of, you know, how we feel about it. Um, you know, my personal opinions on, um, kind of jumping the gun to, a you know, to a, the voter initiative is, is basically exactly kind of what Jesse had, had mentioned. Um, you know, the concerns with the, uh, the legal aspect of it, the enforceability of it, the, you know, the general, um, you know, has it been, <laughs> gone over by, you know, uh, a lawyer. Um, there, it's not as easy as just writing the phrases in an ordinance down and putting them in paper. And there are a lot of aspects that I think, you know, this group has been going through to try to figure out those details. Um, and uh, I am a little disappointed to see something like this jump the gun without any, um, I don't want to say disrespect or respect, but any communication to the people um, who are actually, um, you know, tasked with doing this. I think it's a public thing. It's not necessarily up to one person to, uh, to make the decision to put that forward to the, uh, the voters, but I guess it's our, vo our right as American citizens to, to go through the political process, and I respect that. Um, but I do think that um, you know, it is going to cause a little bit more chaos on top of the already chaotic uh, situation that we've been presented with. So um, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, who did you use? Uh, okay. So how do we want to move forward, Jesse? Do we want to just start uh, talking about retail at this point? Yeah, we can look at maps. Yeah, I know we got can, some maps. Oops, or we can uh, talk theory about what we're doing, or we can just get right into the maps. I think we could probably just get into the maps. Maps a lot of theory the last time. Perfect. Turn my screen off. Uh, yeah, so the, the maps, don't, they're not significantly different than what we looked at the last time necessarily. Yeah, different um, style, but they are missing some things. There's some, I guess, some questions as to exactly what we're going to put as these locations, right? And so the, the state talks school, youth center, mm -hmm. daycare center, right? And what else and does the state playgrounds talk Playgrounds also, because youth, if you, when you look under the definition of youth center includes playgrounds. That's what I thought, right? Our parks, public and private parks that have, you know, kids stuff. So like you said in, in your email, um, a park that would just be a, like a, um, a parking lot and a trail access wouldn't be under the definition. Yeah, because the way it's defining, it's using mm -hmm. parks under the definition of playground, right? That's how we're getting to the... Um, no, it's under the definition, because youth centers is the required setback under the state. And so when you look at 
the state definition of youth centers, it gets broader. Exactly. And so that includes parks that have playground equipment, such yeah. and ball courts, things like that. Yeah, and then when you look at a definition from the state of what a playground is, that's where it includes the ball centers with parks with that. So it's, mm. it's specifically talking to parks with structures or sure. fields that are designed right. towards children. Right. And so I did notice, and that's why I emailed to you, that I noticed that a lot of these yeah. dots on this map yeah. have nothing to do with that. Sure. Yeah, these are just preliminary. I noticed there's a lot of other, like all the churches that we had are not on here. A lot of those are youth centers. So this map actually is less complete, I think, than what we had before, although it does show some parks. Yeah, and so I guess there's a question as to um, how exactly do, are we gonna, can we physically define a youth center without just putting it out for, let's say, public notice? Like, right. let us know if you have a youth center within this yeah. distance. Right? So I had a meeting with, um, uh, with Heidi and Taylor who did the maps to talk about how we do that, and we're pretty much just gonna have to drive around and make lists of these things. And, um, Heidi had talked about maybe doing something on the computer where we can all submit information so we're not reviewing the same list yeah. over. Yeah, well, that's right. Yeah, and collectively, I think that um, you know, the, the working group has a lot of knowledge of where these are located in our community and certainly use that as our first um, mm -hmm. you know, bite at the apple trying to figure out where they are right. located. So with, I don't think we're going to be able to do a lot more than we did last time with these maps until we get the parks that are just like beach access off the map, although a lot of these circles aren't really affecting much the way they are, but we'll have to revise the parks and make sure we get, you know, the Yeah, the sure, on, on this particular there. map, we're missing an entire school. Sure, and then the, the big, the, the job will be to determine which churches. How and quit? You're missing how and quit, Head Start, Daycare Center. Yeah, so there's like, it's a school, it's a youth center, it's a daycare center. It encompasses all of the things we've been talking about and theoretically, then, that would apply with a, a big, giant red circle right, right, right here. And we're missing a playground at Washington and, and Northcrest um, as part of the community clinic, or I'm not yeah. sure if it's part of it. Yeah, so I guess my, one of my <coughs> questions was, so, so we, can, we can include those in there, and then we need to maybe discuss, like, what are the appropriate setbacks that we're thinking, whether they're the same or different, and then and then how do we figure out what those are? I mean, we can walk around all day long and try to keep putting pinpoints on the map, but if, let's say, we're thinking, and this is just a real arbitrary number, it's 1,000 foot for a playground, right? So does that mean we need to put, when we, you know, posting for a new business, does it need to go out in a 1,000 foot radius to all property owners to say, please let us, advise us if there's a playground that we're missing, right? Because mm -hmm. there's no database that says, sure. here's the playground. And just us walking around or anybody walking around trying to put points on a map, you could, you could miss something sure. very easily. Yeah. So normal, that normal process is a 300 foot, something like that. Notice, notification Notification, process, right? Usually. We were but talking so, about increasing Yeah, that. so if we want to talk about these buffers, we probably mm -hmm. have to look at our notification processes getting larger and larger sure. and larger, which, right. of course, is That's slightly fine, more think. cost. But yeah, I mean, we can, we can include that in the, um, in the ordinance as far as mm -hmm. the notification, and then obviously the fee schedule would reflect the fact that we're going to be doing mailings to significantly more. Um, but yeah, this, those are definitely things we can manage, though. I, I, just can't, I can't think of another way that that would be, you would be able to yeah, grasp all that info. Because otherwise, the, the hat would, where do you place the liability on, on who, who yeah. picked up the, all the spots? And so the, the catch at the end of the day will have to be the notifications. Yeah, exactly. and, otherwise the county has some liability in it. Yeah, I think other things are like that. You know, I think that's how it ends at the end of the day is you send out the notifications and then the county is then absolved of the responsibility. We took schools and youth centers and daycare centers, which encompass playgrounds in these specific mm -hmm. use parks, specific use parks. And so one of the things that we all kind of were uh, hemming and hawing and, and trying to weigh was the church thing, right? And so mm -hmm. the definition of a church, I, you know, the, the um, county council had made mention of maybe that goes into the, what would they call it, discretionary? Um, um, yeah, we talked about just going with churches that are youth centers for, for an actual number setback. And then if there's churches that don't somehow qualify as a youth center, um, then they would just um, be part of the notification process like everybody else. 
and I think Joel said it'd be uh, reasonable to include in the ordinance that the Planning Commission gives special consideration to these yeah. churches. That's, that's um, what it was, special with, consideration. If they bring protest, but we, we, they wouldn't be putting a, a, a number, a setback number specifically around these churches. Because of the issue with trying to find Sure, sure. Which I think is a workable solution since I think the majority of the established churches are probably could be considered youth centers. Um, yeah. I, maybe if they even have um, youth services like Sunday schools for kids, like that could be considered um, youth services, I would imagine, even though it's not recreational, it's you know, kids specific stuff. Yeah. If we get into like the youth service, I mean, it's just going to go on and on. You know, the fairgrounds has cannabis expos, gun expos, they serve beer. But they're not a church. We're talking about churches, right. churches. But uh, churches are scrubs. So we're we're talking about you know the youth, the youth, uh, youth centers. You know, and I, I think we should focus on, yeah, what is the definition of a youth center? You know, I think there should be a certain amount of days out of the week that it gets used, or a certain amount of time. You know, uh, to be a youth center. Otherwise, everything ends up turning. I could tell you center. what a youth center is. It's written. But the state the definition is pretty good. Okay, what is it? Yeah, I'm trying to pull it up here so I can read it to you. They're in my computer. I think Heidi had found them. Under the cannabis it's not in code, the it, it references a specific line yeah. in a in a in the in the state yeah. ordinances, and it says I have youth it in my center. And I lost it. I youth center it. means any public or it. private facility that is primarily used to host recreational or social activities for minors, including but not limited to private youth membership organizations or clubs, social service teenage clubs, facilities, video arcades, or similar amusement park facilities. So this would falls back under primary youth, so use, use. Uh, primary, primary, yes. Um, daycare is talking to preschools, extended care facilities, uh, extended daycare facilities, um, other than family daycare homes. It specifically, it right. specifically excludes that. Mm -hmm. Playgrounds mean any park or recreational area specifically designed to be used by children which has play equipment installed, including playground, including public grounds designated for athletic activities such as baseball, football, soccer, basketball, or any similar facility located on public or private school grounds or on city, county, or state parks. So this would encompass any church that would say have a basketball court, mm -hmm. let's say, built in, or a baseball field, or, mm -hmm. or you know, because a lot of them ha do have a gymnasium. Isn't that under the guise of it's a public or private school ground? No. This is any public or private school grounds, city, county, or state park, um, or anywhere that's used by children with play equipment installed. So the any any recreational area specifically, yeah. it, it talks to any recreational area specifically designed by children. And then the other portions of it are talking about city and school yeah. grounds. So I, I think it'd be a stretch to say that the fairgrounds uh, in its entirety would fall into that. I don't, I don't think that would be And accurate. then it gets us to an another, um, as far as parks, are we just including parks? From what I'm seeing with the city, they're state putting a, a buffer. I'm not seeing parks on this on this, this state anymore. Youth centers, all these things fall under the definition. No, but youth def centers. The park. Yeah, it, it has, uh, you know, a, a function for children built in, I think. Right. Just heard. Yeah. So, like, the city's under the, the idea that uh, they would put a buffer around Kidstown, but not around all the beachfront park, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can reduce it down to zero if they want to. Right, but park, the idea of park has been scrubbed. I'm just throwing that out there as far as, um, you know, the park, it, it, the park, you know, is left the state. You know, it's, it's not part of the state guidelines. It's not true. No, it's under the definition of youth center, where there is a setback requirement in the state, which can be reduced if, or changed by the county, but parks fall under that definition well, if, they they have, if they have playground equipment. Right, right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm not talking about parks that don't have playground equipment. Right. So, but it, it, I guess it's really not our purview. It's the city beachfront, but I'm just... Yeah, that's not really any of our concern. The, the spaces that are in the city, like we're not like all the all the circles that we have for the stuff that's in the city. I don't think we even need on our map because we're not. I don't think we're going to be measuring from points that are within the city. No, they, prob they have prob less set probably not. I, 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 and I don't know if they are changing the websites when I go back and look at them. 
necessarily. Probably not, but I could have swore I saw exactly what we're talking about in these ordinance in these codes, let's mm -hmm. say two or three weeks ago. It's there. And then when I opened it up last night, I couldn't find anywhere where it mentioned anything other than daycare center and right. youth center. Because the definition of youth center is not in the cannabis part. It's mm -hmm. under no, a, I know. a separate part of and state so law. This is the copy of the state law where it defines youth center and nowhere under that youth center does it state parks. That's because the funny thing. Because it doesn't define youth center though. You have to go to another part of California code, which is yeah. not part of cannabis. I think park was scrubbed because you have state parks, national park. You know, I mean, the, the idea of what a park can be, an RV park, you know, at a certain point, you know, you're, well, I guess we've got to get to the state. Well, no, it's, it's it's it defines it specifically. I mean, I wish I had it in front of me. I put it on my computer and it, it got, I can't find where I put it. You know, I wish I had printed it out, but well, it, it's very clear. It's not, it's not, it's, it's, it was super, um, refreshing to see how clear the definition was and there wasn't much ambiguity and it was really easy to tell it wasn't rv parks it wasn't all this stuff you're talking about it's specifically playground you know where there's swings and stuff it's like we don't need to pretend like we don't know what a park with playground equipment is yeah. i don't think we need to keep right, talking so it's about a park this with the play it's basically it's a playground is what we're talking about yeah, not, not playground. A park. yeah. so so regardless of if in fact we can go in and find it in california code Right, that the playground is listed because I kind of looked again, I couldn't Wait, find it. You want the definition of playground? I have it right here. I just oh, read okay. it. I just read it. Okay. But, but, irregardless of if we can find it in the California Code, wouldn't that be a good idea as a county to include the definition, you know, of playground under these things? I mean, I think it would be, yeah, irregardless of us finding it in the state code at this very moment. We, we should think about including playground because yeah. there is a physical definition right. in the state. Yeah, just use the state's definition. I think. Yeah, we don't need exactly. to make our own definition exactly. is what I'm getting at. It's already yeah. written down. We don't need to talk about it. It's a really good definition. I wish I had it in front of me. So that, that's, trust me, it's a good one. That's a really, yeah, it's really, I yeah, it was just reading it. It's, sounds very good and I can't really think of too many other situations where we're trying to protect children with these specific instances the one I saw when I was driving through town the other day which doesn't apply to us because it's not in the county but would be the movie theater the first thing I thought when I drove through the thing the other day was there is a vacant building that would be perfect for retail cannabis in the Jed Smith Shopping Center it is the very built unit next to the to the movie theater right and so Granted, there are a lot of children that go to the movies, right? That's a really big thing. And so that, I was thinking if that was under our prerogative, we might want to think right. that this specific instance right. we would include a movie theater. There, there are definitions of it in the state. An arcade. Uh, if you have arcade. more than 10 arcade games, it's a youth center. Yeah. So if you have nine, it's not a youth center. If yeah. you have 10 or so more. So maybe they have more than 10 arcade games. Right, right. you have to go <laughs> count them. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny, a state has an old definition of arcade games. It's a cathode ray tube type thing so modern video games that are LED screens that wouldn't fit into the state definition even so it's kind of funny but the state has a lot of really specific definitions I think we can just copy them and not make any of our own yeah we can look at them um, but like I said I think it's there's like less we have less things on here than we had last time so they're sort of it's good to see so the parks, but let, let's all the address, churches got left can off. Can we address that real quick? Because I, I kind of thought we were asking for a consolidated map so that we just keep adding to it and, to until we decide to take something off. Uh, yeah, the, the churches, we were, we were going to, maybe it was a miscommunication on my part, leaving the church circles off, but we were, what the point was is to not just put circles around every church, but to find the churches that meet the definition of youth centers, which is mm -hmm. probably most of them, mm -hmm. and then put those circles on. And this is just a function of timing. Right. There just wasn't enough days for planning to put it together, I think. And so I think that's what we're dealing so with here. Yeah, so maybe constructively, maybe we should, uh, I mean, going through map by map might not be very beneficial right now. We can now. look real quick at them, yeah. yeah, for a couple minutes, but if, just to see them, make sure everybody sees them. But yeah, that's going to be the bulk of the hard work, I think, is compiling these lists of these locations and getting the map so, accurate enough to so be that's able where to... The, let me go back to something real quick, right? You know, unlike Robert, I'm not here scrapping churches or scrapping parts. I'm looking to get this right for our community. And, and, and so my motivation, again, is to look at everything. And so we had churches on there last time, and we had clearly realized that we had missed a few, right? 
so I think it would be in our best interest to just keep putting everything on there and, and then as we collectively decide to start drawing X's to them, then we do that one at a time. But to take them all off, now we're confused as to which ones we missed. We've wasted the opportunity that, you know, or the, the situation where we already talked about it and we've dealt with it. And, and, and you know, as we, as we hone our position, which we will get to, then we just keep, we'll cross them off because they're not, you know, because they're just a church or not of this or that or whatever. I'm, I'm good with that. But I, I think it's important that we, can, we, we look at the consolidated map that's got everything on it. We just keep hashing that out to make darn sure we aren't missing a circle somewhere of whatever color it might need to be. Right. Yeah, I agree with that. And just for the purposes of today, I was I'm basically just, and when I looked at these maps, I'm going off of my memory from looking at the maps from before and, and sort of the, the these aren't, these, again, these are all going to change a lot, and may, maybe that's what Taylor was waiting for, is that they're not going to be circles. They're going to be polygons around property lines. And so he's working on that in a more specific detail. And we're not going to be able to do much other than what we've already done in terms of just getting a general sense to determine, is this a viable way to limit retail? Or do we need to, to talk about um, numbers, which is some members of the board of supervisors are, are inclined to stick with a ca an actual number of outlets and not let it be limited by appropriate zoning. And so I think yeah. this helps us to determine that and, and direction. Then if we could back up even from there, right, the purpose of the map was just to kind of give us a big feel for you know, how much space is available. And, and as of the first round of maps, it's like, oh, there's a lot of space available. It might not be perfect, but um, and so so again, it, it's big picture stuff. We're just trying to to encompass here, and so you know, we just need to see the maps at a glance with all the circles on them, and then we step back from that and go make some policy you know, that that tends to work. Right? I gave a report to the board yesterday at their meeting, um, and I keep forgetting to really drive it home that I would really like to see some or all of them present at this working group, at least to observe or to just ask questions even, because they ask some questions of me there, but there's not enough time and, and the questions don't come up or I, I forget some of the components that I'd like to answer. And so it would really be great for them to be here to be able to ask questions directly. And, um, but one of the things I did take from that and what I asked them about was, um, I guess I didn't ask them specifically, but uh, Lori volunteered it up, just um, the notion of not being comfortable with letting this restrictive zoning limit the number, but they were more inclined to look toward a cap, an actual number to stick with. And so um, that would be something that we could talk about um, that may not be, it, it, it creates difficulties because of, of the selection process when you have a number. Um, and so looking at things that sort of looked like there really wasn't much room for about more than five, especially if we're going to put a thousand feet or more between the stores. So there probably aren't more than four or five areas anyway. Um, and then so that came to um, questions about what kind of discretion does the board have in the use permit process? Is that a, a good enough backstop for them to limit the numbers? And um, it can't be arbitrary. They can't, as far as I understand, the board can't just say, well, we feel like there's enough stores, so we're not going to permit the sixth one. Um, there would have to be some language written in there s saying um, you know, something about um, density or t something tied to census tracts or something solid that the industry can metric by um, so that when, you, when the board makes findings for why they're denying. It would be part of this, or yeah, it would have to be part of the ordinance. So that was sort of um, that direction, you know, whether you, um, and I didn't get into the discussion with them about um, how to form the ordinance so that the use permit process would be enough for them to be able to limit the numbers. I didn't, you know, even at that meeting yesterday, to have enough understanding of what kind of discretion. Are they allowed to just say, we just feel like there's too many and, and, we, and that's good, but that's not how it works from what I understand. And Heidi can explain more. And maybe. I think something important to realize, <clears throat> and I heard it twice yesterday at that meeting when I watched it online, is that they keep saying, we don't want to be like Brookings. We don't want to be like Brookings. Everybody keeps saying, we don't want to be like Brookings. Brookings right? looks so nice, though. Brookings is beautiful, but let's, <laughs> let's not trash Brookings too much. Yeah, really. But we have to remember that if, 
this city of Crescent City, we have no control over that. This, this board has no control over that. This board of supervisors, this little thing. Right. If this county restrictively limits where, where, where these places can be placed outside of the city limits, guess what? The city is going to look like Brookings. Because if the county only lets two places operate outside, well, then everyone's going to flock to the city because that's really? where they need to be because they can't uh -huh. operate outside of the, the county. The city's not going to allow a bunch of density. I was going to say, maybe, I, maybe I've not, been president like, of majority of the more, city council meetings. More. Uh, they are going to limit the amount of activity in the city. Initially, yes. But they're um, going to, you know, a couple and a couple and a couple. Well, they, they, they clearly have stated, I mean, the council, you know, from, from every meeting that I've been to um, for the last number of months um, and the planning commission meeting for the cities, um, they, they are under the assumption that, yeah, I mean, there, there is a density point that they do not want to, to go over. Um, so they're completely aware of that, and they do seem to be, you know, under the, um, the guise that they're going to limit retail outlets. Um, but they would consider, you know, manufacturing, um, edible manufacturing, things of that nature, non-volatile. Um, they wouldn't mind having a number of those um, because there is some spaces within the city for them to do that. But in terms of retail, since that's what we're talking about right now, they're going to limit the number of retail outlets in the city, and that'll probably stick for a while until it proves itself, the market proves itself that it needs more. Yeah, um, as it moves itself forward slowly. Exactly. So we're not going to see Brookings in Crescent City, period. It won't happen. No, but the more you limit it outside of the city, the more it pushes itself into the city. Yeah, right. absolutely. So the bureaucracy better and the you politics spread it out, of the less totally. concentrated it will look. Absolutely. Yeah, but like Eric said, I think that the city's not going to, um, it doesn't have enough room for enough retail outlets to, like, put a, put a damper on what's going on in the county, I don't think. Um, like, they couldn't, they couldn't fit five, for example, in Crescent City, I don't think, and, and I don't think this, this city is even inclined to even go that, that way, so. Yeah. Um, Just it, fin too financially viable, you know, putting a Sure. One in Smith River in general is probably going to be very difficult based upon how the state is taxing cannabis sure. differently than the state of Oregon. And granted, you're not supposed to cross state lines with it, but that doesn't stop yeah. a lot of people. Yeah, it's getting more and more like a normal business. Like it didn't, you, you've never, probably never heard of a dispensary going out of business because of lack of sales, right? Like never, ever. But it's going to be like that now. Yeah. They're going to be, it, the density is going to come to a point where they can't compete all in the same space and they'll have to. You, you will see dispensaries closing down due to lack of sales in the future. And just as we're on quickly on this topic of what happened at the Board of Supervisors meeting yesterday, um, I noticed when I started reading a little more in depth, we started talking about advertising the other day, uh, a couple meetings ago. If you read the state ordinance, it specifically says that you cannot advertise for any cannabis related business on any highway which, which leaves the state of California. So that would be I-5, 101, 199. You literally cannot advertise on that. And the county should probably look into that because I believe there's a billboard that was mentioned, and I noticed it the other day, that's literally breaking state law right now. Granted, it's not a California business. However, a California business is operating the billboard that's advertising cannabis products in the state of California outside of California code. So probably would suggest that the county code enforcement or somebody look into that because can, there's can you repeat the source of where you well it was mentioned at the board of supervisors meeting yesterday there yeah. is a, a billboard in smith yeah, river yeah i know about the billboard but the part about not being able to that in the county in the yesterday's meeting it's okay. a state state law state law okay in the cannabis code if you look under the code okay. under advertisements, yeah. I believe it is. I read it. There's okay. a specific, it's specifically in it. That's why it's a little unclear. I wanted to talk about it a little bit. There specifically talks about you cannot advertise on a highway which is goes through and, and, and exits the state. Okay. Yeah. So you can I haven't seen that one. But they, there's one here that gets to census track stuff. Any advertising or marketing placed in broadcast, cable, radio, print, digital communication shall only be displayed where at least 71.6% of the audience is reasonably expected to be 21 years of age or older, as determined by reliable, up-to-date audience composition data. Right. <laughs> well, I, I do remember seeing that in the initial draft of MRSA. Um, I don't know if that specific interstate um, highway um, advertising actually made it into the final draft. Um, 
It, yeah, I, I actually did look for it not too long ago because I had brought it up you to the Board of Supervisor it, meetings yeah. a couple I months ago. I recently added it like yesterday. So. <laughs> it was there when I was emailing before the right yeah. meeting. They're constantly updating it like yeah. every day. Exactly. It's really annoying. I mean, truthfully, it is kind of a, you know, it, it's an odd thing to see. It's been there for a couple of years. I'm surprised it hasn't actually drawn up any IRE since that point. <laughs> so yeah, but it would probably behoove the county to look into the code and just see how that would pertain. Because, I mean, we are talking about a little bit of a gray area, and its fact is it's an outside state entity advertising in the state. But, yeah. but I do believe they still have to follow state law when it comes to advertising in state. So code enforcement is part of my department, and okay. we will look into it. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, public comment, please. Uh, you can stay there or come up wherever you want. Well, we can uh, hear you. What the site is talking about is actually on trust property, right here in the Central River Rancheria. So I wouldn't know how would that be affected if we had to go over the Central River Rancheria. Is that subject matter? Or would it be state or California or whatever? Yeah, it's a, that's I, a total gray area, right? I, I believe it's, we've done the research. I think it's just on the line. Okay. I think it's on the land that's in fee. I'm pretty sure because when it came up, there was a lot of concern over it, and I believe we did the research, but we can confirm that. But yes, if it's in, if it's held in trust, yeah, that's an entirely different story. Yeah. It's held in trust, then it becomes a state communication to the federal entity wanting to, you know, see why that's happening. I would assume, as opposed to the county, probably. Um, yeah, that's definitely something that the board wants to get going on. We got a time frame for getting the um, tax thing, and I sort of asked them again, is this something that you want to make sure we get done right away, um, something as comprehensive as we can for all the license categories, or is it something you guys are willing to put off um, for the next election cycle, wait for the, you know, learn about the business, let it get established, and I, I didn't get the... I didn't get the sense that they were comfortable with that. They wanted to do something now. Can I get some closure on this other, the prior, if we're going to yeah. go off the map? Sure, yeah, let's I mean, if there's sure, any expectation from my department as far as what needs to be produced, yeah. if anything at this point, if it's yeah. just being tabled, that's mm -hmm. fine. But if it's something we need to know. Yeah, we do need, we need to finish to this up. Um, yeah, just a, a little pause there. But we do need to... Um, figure out how we're going to, the best way to go about, you know, getting these maps all updated. Um, well, that, that was the reason why I was working on the polygons. Uh, and one thing about the polygons, from what I understand, is that that's going to be a little bit time intensive. So I would like to know exactly what all of you want on the map if we're going to go to the effort to put together the polygon. I mean, I know this is all you know, pretty fluid, but um, you know, I would each like time. to see just a standard thousand foot buffer. The two thousand foot buffer would affect me. It would affect Patty, and she's been there for about a decade. And uh, so the state standard six hundred feet. I think a thousand feet would be real generous. Let's uh, get the points on the map first, and then the idea with that is that we're going to have multiple different size circles, starting with the state standard, and then working up from there. It, eventually, yeah, so though, if we're going to be doing the polygons, we're yeah. not going to be doing We get the points so first well, before the polygons. I would not go to polygons at this point. We're, we're just trying to get that sure. big picture concept. <laughs> but in the interest of time, because we know, for example, that schools, yeah. we need to do well, that. I so guess. he can be working on polygons for schools because it's going to take a long time right. while we're trying to compile the list of all the additional points, okay. I think. But he doesn't need to wait until we get all the points to start working on the points that we already know. I guess she's maybe wanting to know the, the size of the polygon for the school, right? Because it would be two different measurements, or well, would I that guess, be very I mean, is, is Robert suggesting if we're going to have one that's 1,000? I guess what I'm hearing today is we will meet potentially a 1,000 from schools, a 2,000 from schools. I just schools. think a 1,000 feet a circle, you know, that get you over the state standard. It's so easy if you applied it to everything. I, I like simple stuff, but well, and, the, and then what I'm hearing is Blake would like to see on that same map the, the churches back with the with the, mm -hmm. and, the parks. and the parks and the so, youth centers. Mm -hmm. so, so there's going to be a lot of colors. Does anyone have any issues with seeing lots of different colors? No. So, okay. but we have you, know, you have some we have some points. We definitely need to be on there, right? Schools, mm -hmm. youth centers, right. daycare. 
we talk about playground okay. and church. church. It's going to be a lot of work. We're going to have then, to change I things. guess we need to decide if we're going to do an <coughs> arbitrary park or if we're going to let the park fall under the playground definition because the playground takes, okay. takes precedence on a lot of the parks. But park. for example, yeah, because like I'm just going to give a, the, a, an example was that the end of the mouth of the mouth of the Smither Road, right? There's, there's a, there's a, that's considered a park, but all it is is a five car parking lot, right? And, and, and so that probably isn't really necessary to go yeah, and find all those yeah, points and put all yeah. those points on. Playground parks. But the... And I would, I guess I just want to weigh in and agree with Robert that, you know, it doesn't matter what size of the circle at this point. We just want to get the point. So a thousand foot right. uniform works or 600 for the little park thing or whatever it's going to be. Yeah. Edward. Where? Where? Oh, that would probably be a gray area. It's also trust property, right? Not for us to determine that. You'd have to look at their release forms and look at the percentage of them that were under 18. That's, that's probably right on the, <laughs> the question mark spot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I don't know. So as working on these polygons, um, they may have to get changed, but um, I had suggested since we had looked at 2,000 foot circles around schools and initially we were, we were comfortable with that. And so when you get to polygons, it's going to be shorter because so, of the size of the, of the yard. So a 1,500 foot polygon would be um, about the same as a 2,000 foot circle. Okay. Initiative. Oh, oh, yes, yes, great. So, uh, so basically my information is just that whenever the county receives an initiative, uh, county council is required by the elections code um, to create a ballot title and a summary of that initiative. So it's neither an endorsement nor um, a, um, I guess, the opposite of an endorsement. Um, so that's that's what we have done for that particular initiative. Could you have one specific question about that, if you could? Yes. Um, so that, well, as a lawyer, it's, I don't want to make you say something. <laughs> but, um, so that would mean that it is, it doesn't necessarily mean that the ordinance is legal or consistent with state law or consistent with county. Yeah, it's just exactly what okay. I said. It's not, it doesn't mean we've reviewed it for legality or consistency right. or anything else. We've simply created a ballot title and a summary. Okay, very good. Understood. At this time, yeah. Got it. Thank you. Okay, yeah. So it's just consensus on trying to put points on a map, right? So I think, I think. Those are the good points to put on a map, whether or not we, in the end, decide that, let's say, church can be defined and placed on a map. In terms so, of the polygons, I, but I did. Most of them would fall under the other definitions anyway, right? So. Taylor is, I, I believe, hoping to get to work on these polygons with a 1,500-foot setback around schools. That's what I told him to try first. So you told them 1,500 feet? 1,500, because we had, and the reasoning behind that, as I explained, we had a 2,000-foot circle around the center point, which we were all relatively comfortable with at the first looking of the maps. And so a 1,500-foot polygon around the campuses is going to be a pretty close to a 2,000-foot circle. Maybe, maybe, maybe it would be 1,200 feet, depending on, uh, on a large campus, 1,000 foot. You know, on a very small campus, you, you, know, you know what I'm saying. If you have yeah, a campus just a thousand feet across. Line and we had arbitrary points right. somewhere in the middle so of, these, sure. of these properties. And we don't want to have like different ones for different schools that, that may become too difficult. So we kind of want to find one that works for all. So that's why I asked them in case, do with the 1500, that's going to be as close as I think we can get to what we looked at already. Um, and then if that looks all wrong, he's going to have to redo it. You know, I mean, it's going to take a bunch of work, but I, I, guess I suggest just starting with that. We could start with I'm something else. Curious as to why why do we need that kind of detail? Because that is a lot of work at this point. At this, it's the law, but it's not it's not required at this point in the process. I, I guess it's just because it's something that he can be doing. 
Like, and, you know, it's like, what else is he going to be doing? He could be doing his regular job, but in, on this project, yeah, I want a hundred other things. Yeah, I yeah, I don't mean it like that. I'm yeah. like, you guys, what do you guys do all day? I thought he worked yeah. for us. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm trying to do is get as get staff to spend as much time on this project specifically. And so, if there's something else that he could be doing instead, I'm all for that for sure. Like, if he's, you know, on board with helping us just make a list of these points, I'm cool with that too. So I don't know what. Well, if he's the only guy who can start working on the polygons, then I would like to look at polygons around campuses. We already know it's going to be, we, we need to set back around campuses. I want to see what they look like when you get into the shapes, not just the circles. It may look to, maybe he could just do one area with polygons and, and compare it to what it looked like with the circles. Okay. I don't know. If, if he's going to invest the time in that, I just want to confirm that everyone is okay with the schools. We went to the California Department of Public Education, whatever that department, and we were able to get a list of all the public schools and private schools in our community. And I think we hit along on you know, the faith-based schools and, and all of those. But if you see anything that we've missed, please let us know. Can, There's the playground on Washington and Northcrest uh, that's part of the community health You put center. that map? I don't know how okay, you now, but that's not, a, that's not a school. But it's not a school, but it's a playground, right? Uh, right? Okay, and I'm sure there's a whole lot of other points. Yeah. Right. We're just talking so, about schools, I guess, right now. Yeah, there was I, a I, school I, that I was wondering about that's over behind, kind of behind Big Five and north yeah, of the... Yeah, that's a juvenile hall, I Believe. Oh, okay. But, no, but I mean, it's there is a, there may be a school associated okay. with that. So I'm that one crosses drive. over the. I think we added that. that for we should have added it. It um, was in there last time, and it's on there. Can we go to that map? Yeah, it's the sure. city there. north. Yeah, that would be down here. Let me try to zoom in a bit. Yeah, the, the two thousand foot buffer. Uh, it doesn't initiate Proposition right, 64. It removes the status quo for cannabis in Del Norte County. You know, it takes us backwards as far as cannabis reform. The 2,000-foot buffer, you know, I mean, it, it eliminates PADI. It, it eliminates, you know, most of the non-city portion of, of Crescent City. I don't see how that affects anything in Prop 64. Right, this isn't the map. You said that the status quo, something about status quo for Prop well, we've 64. we've had a status quo of cannabis in our county. So Patty's been operating there for a decade. Where's the third? You know, Maybe, we, however, the status quo for cannabis in this county hadn't oh. talked to schools oh, in the past. The and now the Prop 64 is specifically talking to schools right, but and we've specifically giving the county the ability to limit the sales of cannabis around schools to a further extent than the 600 foot that's deemed, that's mandated in the state. So the status have. quo is certainly changing after the passage of Prop 64. Well, Prop 64 has a, a 600 foot buffer and, uh, and furthermore, you know, our, both of our organizations had planned to com completely comply with state law and have done so. So, um, but so what a part of this group, part of the re this county is to, to implement uh, the will of the voters and to protect uh, the cannabis reform and what we've achieved to the state. Um, but your current facility isn't affected by... You know, and I could tell you as far school, as right? what are we trying to keep away right. here. So like we have uh, Payless Shoes I was going by today. It's almost completely boarded up. Homeless live outside there and sometimes inside when they can get in. Shop Smart, the same parking lot. I used to work there for six years, shift managing those nights. Is completely boarded. Well, 50% of the windows are plywooded over. You know, so what we bring to the or to the, to, the, to our to our county is we bring occupancy, we bring cameras, and all we're asking is that our county make a ordinance that is not too much harsher than state law. We are one of the most popular Prop 64 counties in the state. If there was one county to say, hey, we voted for this, it is Del Norte County. And so, 2,000 feet is absurd. All right, yeah, I mean, to be honest, it's, it's um, you know, it's less about, you know, keeping you out of sight of kids, and it's more about creating zoning restriction so that we don't have to pick a number and then select the process. That's what it's all about. And the supervisors would be more comfortable with the cap we're finding, you know? So at this point, yeah. we need to take direction from the supervisors in that area anyways, I think, if we want to make an ordinance that sure. we expect to be adopted. Well, again, Robert, you need to remember that the county council also spoke to the fact that, that we still need to consider corridor access. So, you know, I'm a, I voted yes on Prop 64. I'm not ashamed to say that, but 
what I voted for isn't just willy-nilly let it all go let it be unrestricted I voted for prop 64 based upon what was written in those in the in the, in the thing and and I like the idea of the county can come in and further restrict some of the things that the state has put numbers on uh, so you know as, as, a, as a yes voter in prop 64 I'm an advocate for larger buffers around schools so so to arbitrarily say that the 60 percent of voters that voted yes on prop 64 would be an advocate for 600 only that that's that's not true at all you know there, so there Robert, are definitely people I voting yes on prop 64 that are, are for more buffers and and I I would like I like the 1500 foot polygon idea because it, it uh, the squares around property lines are much different than these circles that we're doing um, and, and then and then that boils back to to corridor access I think there's some abilities to rescind some of these giant buffers when we're talking about corridor access Can I suggest we solicit public comment? To I asked Patty to see if, if maybe you know she'd find out her boundaries and s see what's going to affect her there. And we, while she's talking, can we look at the map of, of the space that we're referring to? Since I don't know where it is. Can you kind of see the? Just getting over pneumonia, so I'm not Get in well really soon. good shape. <laughs> but um, so I did do some looking into the maps and stuff like that. To see what it was, um, we used to be a, a thousand foot door to door from our front door to the church door. Now with this new thing that you're proposing, we're not we're within 580 something feet if you jump over roofs and go through yards. Um, we're 3,158 feet away from Pine Grove School, so we have a big huge buffer there, over 3,000. Um, we have been there for seven years. We've never had any problems, never any issues, anything like that. Uh, it's really hard to get a landlord to give you a space to have a cannabis place. We searched for nearly two years to be able to have somebody that actually had a child that died from cancer that needed cannabis access to allow us to even have a building that had medical marijuana in it. It's not easy. A lot of businesses in Del Norte County are against it. We searched for years. It took us two years to find our location and put it into place. We've helped a lot of people. We don't peddle, we've never peddled to anybody under the age of 21. We've always stayed strictly with that. Um, I'm not asking you to change the law because the law isn't in effect for schools. What I'm asking you is, is don't re keep on restricting us. We're, we're sitting by ourselves out there. Robert's out by himself. I mean, we're not all grouped up into one little situation. Right across the street from me, they sell alcohol and tobacco. Next door, there's a construction company. Over on to the kitty corner is Hastings, uh, Hemmingston's, excuse me, and they're doing that. I share a building with a property real estate management company. It's, we're trying to be incognito as we have ever could be, and we've always strictly stayed to that. We've never flaunted it. We're just asking you not to restrict us. We're trying to do good for it. We're a nonprofit. I don't even get paid from there. We, all of our funds go to, we donate all of our funds to seniors that can't pay their power. We buy food for seniors that can't afford food. We don't get paid from it. All of our money that we make, we donate back into the community and we've done that for the last eight years. So I'm just asking you to take a little consideration into, in our locations, it's not easy. I'm still trying to get my arms around where, where you're located and whatnot. I think Heidi tried Enjoy to get the cursor on it. And, 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 and what are we doing that would restrict you? It w I'm unclear as to... We're, we're, we're kind of by... So I'm okay. sit with North Coast Properties. Yep. Kitty Corner across from us is Hemingston's. Yeah, that helped me. Now I got a feel for where you're at. 
And we're at 1890, so we're right on this site. Yeah, so, so again, your concern, it looks like there's two big 2,000 foot circles here that would hit you. Yeah, they do. And what and is the lower one here? We're 2,000 feet away from Pineville School. You're real close to this other school. It's a yeah. private school at a church, and it, it's you're less than a thousand feet from that one. It looks but like. we are less than a thousand feet on that. One. You said 580 feet from what? 581 feet. If you're taking the, the circular maps and go through yards and over roofs to get to that school. That's the right. legality of what California's measuring. Yeah, they it's can't measure direct, from Dorette's property line to property. It's a direct line. line from property line to property line. So yeah, that's we're, in the, far, we're right. in the far, we're in the far rich yeah. of 1890. Well, a county can set it's small. Or property numbers. lines, parcel property lines sure. is what they're measuring. And that's a state right. thing. And so, but I think we're getting a little further out on what we're yeah. talking about. You are a medical licensed facility, right? We are. And so we're talking a little bit specifically towards retail sales. Well, it's, it's just all going to go, no, it's it's all, it's all go away. But you can, she she goes extinct in January if we don't Yeah, you can't continue to that. M, it's a different license, right, to just well, medical that's, sales Yeah, that's only. not what we're talking about. We're talking the commercial licensed op scheme from the state. It's a, this is, covers it all. We're not going to do a separate one for M and, and R licenses. Yeah, I get you all need commercial licenses, but yeah. there's specific commercial medical license and specific commercial not retail really. license, right? Not really. It's a box and well, check. Well, they, M okay. A. So, not. yeah, they are the same. Um, one in the same in terms of the operations that you do from the retail space, but one serves anyone over 21, the other serves anybody who's got a state licensed medical card. What she's doing won't be legal after the end of next year. I have year, a question for is basically what it comes down to. Do you have any intentions in the future right. to get into any recreational sales to anyone over adult use, in, or are you considering just staying in medical in your current? Well, honestly, position? we applied for it back in December. Okay just because we knew that there was a deadline by the end of the year we have it we hold it okay we're not exercising it. right so I, I guess what i mean is so in your in your business growth you know projections do you see your business being recreational at some point or do you say you're i think if it was it would be really minimal okay because, because we already have a big membership base on just medical right um, because, I mean, there is a part of me that feels like, you know, restricting access um, for medical-only um, retail spaces does put an overburden on the accessibility for medicine for patients. Um, now, if we're talking about retail recreational to anybody, adult use over 21, I do seem to think that there is some, you know, necessity to, to restrict um, those those boundaries or make those boundaries you know larger but i do see what you're saying and um you know i truly i actually respect your business because um you. you know i i <laughs> to tell you the truth you've done a very good job at keeping incognito um i i, I tried for years to get a hold of you um, <laughs> <laughs> and find out who was operating it um it was out of curiosity myself um, and so I commend you um, in doing what you've said Thank you've you. done, and I think you've done a wonderful job. And I, I think the burden is on us um, and the county to to help provide the access for you to continue doing what you're doing. Thank you. Well, that's what we also talked about um, the term grandfathering in existing locations, right? I mean, that was that's been discussed since the get-go. So then, then the question just boils down to because I've seen it both ways, and we've talked about it, and we're pretty sure that the county can 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 go smaller on some of these things like in order to grandfather in i've read some parts of the ordinance that says the county can only further restrict so it's no, a little I bit of a gray change, area it says clearly that, that the county or city can change the distance it exactly. doesn't say increase or decrease so you can increase it or decrease no i know and then in that same yeah. in that same when i started reading through all the code at the bottom of all of that it said specific to all the above things it says the county can further restrict they use the term further which made right. a little bit of gray area when I thought, well, how can you make it less? How is that making it further restrictive? It's not. Right. And so it was just a gray area I thought was going to recommend that the county council look into it because I've seen specifically the California, you know, dumbing it down on these points saying that the county can, can lessen it. Mm -hmm. But when I actually read the code, the codes only use the term further restrict. Right. I have seen that too. But so it that was like kind it of was funky. amended to change, but I don't know. 
I don't think necessarily existing locations are completely wiped off the map by, by what we're doing right here. There's the ability mm -hmm. to, to, to grandfather in existing locations. Yeah, I think, you know, I think when we had mentioned that to Joel the last time, you know, I think his personal opinion um, played into what he had mentioned, which was he just doesn't see grandfathering as being something that he really is for. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I, I'm not exactly sure I'd like for him to explain a little bit more in detail as to why he has that opinion. But I do believe that there are, I mean, there are plenty of jurisdictions in the state that are allowing for grandfather placement. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, we might be looking at something like that, in particular was, for somebody like Patty. He seemed to be a little bit less kosher on um, taking a date that was way in the past. Right. He kept mentioning, oh. well, today's date, the day we write this. Yeah, right. I'm talking about grandfathering operations by date. Yeah, and there was two different discussions, like grandfathering the operation versus grandfathering the location. They're two different concepts entirely right and so if we're going to especially if we're going to talk about l having a cap on the number then you would start by saying we're going to we're going to first include the existing ones we have on the cap but we may make a move based on on if they're not well, in the right location you mentioned 580 and that specifically goes outside the right. kind of it's somewhat of a hard written rule in the state but we seem to be of the idea that we mm -hmm. can actually lessen that if we need. I think the city is pretty confident that they can, they can lessen that, but because yeah, otherwise sure. they're hosed, they can't do anything. We've never had any complaints from the church. I mean, our church, the church sure. that is near us is all fenced in. Sure. They keep to theirself. Now, if we could do things on a specific, like when, before I learned about how government worked, I had this fantasy that we could do everything on a specific basis, right? Like case by case basis, you know, because like. The good operators, you don't need to hide out. You could be anywhere. You know, if you if you don't want to have a sign out and you, and you want to run your business a certain way, then you really could fit anywhere. But the problem is, is you can't require that of everybody. And so not everybody wants to, like, if everybody operated their farm the way I operate my farm, I would say no restrictions. They could be anywhere. But people don't operate like that. People go and make mess of things and do things incorrectly. and get flamboyant and don't care about their neighbors and cause all kinds of destruction. Sure. So you have to have these tight rules that fit everybody, people who want to abuse the system. That's basically what this is all about, is dealing with the few bad apples. If everybody was respectful like you and like we are on our farm, I don't think you'd need ordinances. You wouldn't even need regulation. Everybody would just get along. But unfortunately, like most people aren't like that. Most people want to push the boundaries and take advantage. And so that's where we're stuck in the middle is how to let somebody who wants to do what you're doing do what you're doing, yet not write the rules that then allows somebody else to come and take advantage of it and mess it all up. And that's where the, the give and take comes to me, you know, like from my perspective of just learning about government, craving ultimate freedom, but then seeing what the responsibilities of, of the county are and how the rules have to be consistent for everyone. Everybody has to play by the same rules. It's difficult to come in and make a, an, a separate set of rules for one operation. It complicates things for the county. And then in the end, I think it lends to the perception of lack of equality. Um, so that's what I was kind of hoping for, you know, We've never had any problems with the law. We're kind of hoping for maybe some kind sure. of guidance with the grandfathering. In. Sure. Because there's so little commercial property on North Crest already. Sure. And it is, and it does serve that whole township out there. Mm -hmm. And it's not in the spotlight. Um, and I'm sorry. I'm just trying to gather my thoughts. I'm not, I'm not in Certainly. my right mind right now. Certainly. But um. Uh, well, take your time. It's okay. We're just trying to still suit the people that we are. They're they're fear. Sure. They come in with fear, and they, they shouldn't have to have sure. that fear, because the large base of our our membership right. is over the age of sixty one. Sure. I mean they. But one thing it's, it's all they can do just to come in and get right. the courage to park in the parking sure. lot. Sure. I see <laughs> what you're doing is a good thing, and I I know I don't, I don't know a lot about non-conforming uses in the laws, but there are things that restrict expansion of non So if you, like say, if you were considered a non-conforming use now because you were inside of a restrictive zone, mm -hmm. um, then sometimes those non-conforming uses can be allowed to continue, but they can't expand. That's or right. maybe if you sell it, it doesn't transfer. Or new uses to be new added. Uses. I mean, for example, if, if you're doing medical now and you were to be grandfathered, 
that would right. not allow you to do recreational. So if we had something like that that was clear that uh, that restricted your operation, you know, regardless, because like, you know, let's say you wanted to sell it or whatever, or you had a change of mind and you wanted to put up a big old sign or whatever, you know, like it needs to be um, written like that, you know, like, and it's already existing and the way county code is written, um, non-conforming uses can't that, expand. That probably has a big function of considering the grandfathering. So that's why I was kind of sure. asking about the licensing. You know, maybe there's a specific licensing that restricts the medical mm -hmm. use, the sizing. Sure. Because I get it. Like, yeah, I, I think, and I know nothing about your business. I've never been there. I don't, it, kind of grasping where it is now. Mm -hmm. But it seems like a very good business to keep in, in, in motion in medical patients. Mm -hmm. But there's the whole, if we, you allow it, and then it can just right. arbitrarily turn on the next day and go like right. this. And they would have to be written to where, you know, that, that location wouldn't be allowed to apply for a, maybe a recreational designation license with the state or something that keeps it consistent with its use. Um, signage things are difficult. I'm learning from county council. There aren't really constitutional ways to tell a business owner what they can and can't put on their sign mm -hmm. when it's, unless you tell everybody to do the same thing. And so um, that, I don't know where that would come in. If, if the non-conforming use thing would, would allow the county to restrict new signage, I don't know. That would be a legal question. Um, but There's a lot of um, guidance, sorry to interrupt. There's a lot of guidance that can be had on signage and business and professions code. We enforce that as part of the weights and measures function of our department. So maybe able to find some, some stuff there. But you're right, you couldn't, it couldn't be arbitrary between different businesses. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. So the maps, we should just concentrate on getting these points, these points that we really need to have on these maps as best as possible. And then okay. I guess there's some dis... Okay. And, and from that, that sounds fine. From what I learned today, um, we, we need to get those Head Start facilities on there. We need to get the community park at um, Washington and Northcrest on the map. So, and then the churches. So we're not going to do polygons but we're just going to do points perhaps the points in sure. different colors representing what they are once we get all of that then turn it into polygons okay so at the next so meeting you just want the points yeah, color code. okay yeah and, and then so this just, just to clarify um we've mentioned head start a minute that what school mm -hmm. we're missing i don't think that actually qualifies under the definition of the state as a school it actually qualifies under the definition of a youth center or daycare center so because under the definition of schools under the state, it only talks specifically through grades 1 through 12. It doesn't have K, K through 12? No, it talks yeah, 1 through I, 12. Oh, okay. And I think the reason why I didn't pick up this one, or I believe Elk Valley may have one, is because they're probably on land held in trust and probably not licensed. Oh. That's correct, however, they're still website. licensed by, they still operate through the state. That, that is a yeah. state funded they, they thing. They weren't on the list. I have no problem putting on yeah. the Yeah, they're just on a different sure. list. Yeah. So, a different so, list yeah. so what yeah. would you, so as a youth? Well, so youth technically they classify them, they would be classified under this state law that we're dealing with right now as a, both a youth center and a daycare center. Okay. Less, because less if you read the youth center, one of those ones it talks about, I think that's under the daycare center, it talks specifically about preschool children and that would be how that particular place and also the one um, on, uh, does, out by Elk Valley on does Elk Valley. the Yurok tribe have any similar facility? I do. Um, does the Yurok tribe have kind of a head head start facility or some type of a more than one, yes. okay we, we may want to know where those are located so oh, we can okay thank you I have a question for Robert when we were talking about the setbacks and the capping of retail. Alice, so would you maybe be more in favor of um, having a cap like five and then having much smaller setbacks? As, cause to me, this is like, this isn't about keeping it away from schools really so much as just limiting the number. It's a functional way of limiting the number. So would you like to see us go a different direction where instead of creating big barriers to limit the number we just pick a number and then find a way to pick who gets that number you know like patty says this is you know i mean especially if, if you're coming at it without any property you know it's very very hard like would you rent to me 
you, you want it because you can't invent, you can't legally really even deal with the money. You can't even put you know like I was trying to get the Starbucks location. You know, I've been fishing for that one for over a year. Thought I had her on. You know, she won't tell me the truth. Well, finally comes out. I can't bank your money. You know, and uh, and so so it's this incredibly difficult thing to find a location unless you can go buy the winning location. You know, and so you know for yeah I mean I'd rather see a, a cap and and just go to like a state standard you know how would you yeah. sort out the cat how would you like to see sorting out the, the picking of the of the let's say we had five what would be your process to me because that seems to be the biggest issue. there's two me's here you know there's me robert the guy who would do well if there's one <laughs> you know? then there's the guy who's got principle you know who says uh um you know probably should come first come first serve I mean how else do you you know I mean I guess you could say well do you have any experience or whatever that you know but I mean the state standards are just so uh, I mean there's I have a name tag I had to print name tags for <laughs> ourselves you know I mean it's just uh, the, the state standards you know put you through such a if you can if you can abide by the state I mean I don't know what else you could do better for the community you know at these places you know so I think um, you know an RFP process is what a lot of local jurisdictions in the state are using. Uh, they use a scoring system, and that scoring system is based off a, a particular amount of categories. Then each category is given a score. Um, you go through interview processes. You submit a proposal um, from an RFP. The staff of the county would go through those RFP proposals. They would basically have a guideline for scoring the RFP. Um, they would take a specific space of that. They would score it out of, say, if we get 10 applications for five spots, um, the, you know, the, 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 the best of those RFPs would move into the second phase of the, of the proposal process and the vetting process, which would more than likely be an on-site interview with the, the financial stakeholders, the business management aspect of the, of the operations. Um, and it would mostly be left up to the staff um, to score based off of, you know, how we structure a scoring. Um, how does that plan. fit in then with a use permit requirement? I'm not exactly sure how that would fit in, but I think that use permit would be beholden to you actually, f you know, qualifying within your RFP process for that okay. use permit. So it would be probably at the end of that, at the end of the proposal. In order to even be able to apply for a use permit, you'd have okay. to go through the RFP process. But okay. what I don't understand is that I don't, I guess I don't know enough about them. I haven't looked at the details of how the RFP process works, where the rubber meets the road, who makes the final decision, and based on what. Right. And how do we determine whether or not it's arbitrary, whether or not it's determined on you know, nepotism or favoritism. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that when I talk th about this with county staff, they don't have that answer either and that's their largest concern is nobody wants to be where the buck stops in determining who gets picked so i think that's where um, when you structure the proposal platform of the scoring system chart that's where the staff the supervisors us would get together and actually structure it so that there isn't any arbitrary choice by anybody it's literally laid out it's well, like a test right. you so get 90 so creating that structure yeah it would be creating that structure so, so me, that's what you would need to move on to the second that. phase unless you scored say over right. 80 so i'd like to talk about that chart. specifically because in like i i would that's what we need to do right now really is is talk about what an RFP process would look like to determine whether or not it's even realistic because in my mind it's not it's it's a dumb idea and it'll never work but I want to learn about what it is so that right. I can know and what I think I'm that would be a good about. thing because educated you know, would be better than ignorance um, and I believe that yeah, I mean, the RFP process that. is working in a lot of different locations very well because what they're noticing is they're getting the best choices possible they're the people who are willing to, you know, sit in front of the staff, sit in front of the council members, the supervisors, and actually go through the process with them. Um, what you're going to find, if we don't have an RFP process, we're, we're going to be shooting in the dark. You know, if somebody gets a building, they're, they got the building, well, so then what? So well, they are the, I mean, the they most... Have, unless they have a use permit. I mean, they have to go through the use permit exactly, process. Exactly, but the use permit doesn't have the parameters set in like an RFP proposal does. There's, there's, there's mechanisms for, you know, judgment mm -hmm. based off of what we... 
put out there for for sure. that scoring yeah. chart. Yeah. I just think like that what, if we for example, let's start with something because it's it's too weird to me because anything that I can imagine just sounds like illegal and unconstitutional and like favoritism. I, I can't think of any. I guess we just look at it a little differently. Right. Yeah. Just, just, a, <laughs> just a question. I, um, I guess what I'm questioning is, do we really need to go to this kind of detail? We're here to write this large high level ordinance that, that blankets the county. If we restrict it to five or 10 or whatever a number is, that's good. If we have some circles with or, or polygons, that, that, that's good. And, and if we have a grandfathering clause, that's good. Right? We, that's what we do. Oh, I think you can. I, I think you can. Yeah, you, you just, you fine tune those to where they generally work. And then it's, free market capitalism. It, it, it's let the marketplace decide who, where, and when. To what extent we're going to have all Under of the, the parameters. Of the, of the, I think the, the big thing there in this whole conversation and then is the, the, the cap, right? The number, yeah, right? Correct. And so that's what limits free market, well, free market, right? And so I hear what Robert's saying and what you guys are all saying. We're here looking at these maps, right? And we're trying to look at expanding these, these polygons or circles or borders, right? And, and, and the concept behind that, at least initially here, was to not go with this RFP and this select the number right. limit because these sizings will help spread everything apart, right? And so if the idea is to actually have a, a number, then all of this that we're doing is semi-pointless. Not semi-pointless, but it doesn't need to be as intense. But it doesn't need to be as intense because the purpose well, is different. They all can't be in the same neighborhood or something like that. that, that well, that was the. But that would be through the RFP process. Well, that's the, that also the separation between the stores. That's the simplest way to not make yeah, sure they're not that the would same be rather easy without, without these circles. A thousand feet between the locations. So that's something separate. But it is, it does matter. We do need to to decide yeah. if we, if we want to use a cap to limit it or if we want to use this or a, or like you said a combination of both and that will make the maps look very different i think if we're going to just I, say five we don't need as i i guess just then this is an ignorant statement from an ignorant point of view i would say that the rfp process has potential for corruption and po politics right and, and i don't like that that's what i'm right. afraid of especially that's in this county yeah. and so so I, w I again i kind of want to back up to the overview let's just get the big picture let's settle that out okay and and, and then i kind of hope <laughs> that that uh it just works out right that, that's sure let's put a cap and put prioritization for collectives as the state kind of mm -hmm. intended you know right. the original mm -hmm. that yeah. was the intention for uh -huh. states to, to to work existing um collectives that are honoring the purpose of prop 215 and yeah. get those operational first give them priority at state licensing yeah, and the state true. did put that deadline sure. of september 16th or whatever of 2016 as long as they're special incorporated prior right. to that date and they would be given priority application sure. status so state. that's definitely something and so a cap would allow like so big big setbacks end up locking out places that would actually be good, that we might all agree are the best. We talked about that from the beginning. And so if you, if you did have a cap, then it would allow them to be fitted properly and not be limited by the arbitrary circles. It's just that putting the cap has its own problems. And so they both have problems because you're gonna end up, I mean, either, I'm definitely learning how to accept imperfection, which is hard for me with yeah, this, it's, like it's in my business. Compromise. Right. <laughs> And so it's clearly not, there's going to be some great locations that are going to get X'd out, unfortunately. Um, so here's a, here's a concept as far as these circles going on this map, right? Because actually the one we have on the screen is a fairly decent example of setbacks and, and then sizing between lots, right? So very roughly in this particular map of what we've broadly discussed, there could only be one retail space because we're talking about arbitrarily number a eh, thousand foot between spaces. There does not a lot, of, you, maybe you could squeeze two in this map, right? If you, if you picked all of those things we did. But here's a concept, 2,000 foot schools or 1,500 foot schools, whatever we wanted to talk about, uh, 600 to 1,000 foot on parks and youth centers that are, that are, that are, that are that's written into the state code. 
playgrounds that were in there. And then on corridors, we talked about corridors of the day. 101 corridor, right. 199 corridor. Mm -hmm. you if, if your business is located on the corridor, then, then, then it's down to the state 600 foot, let's say, from a school. So right. if you're in the corridor of 101, then it's a 600 foot. But if you're not on the corridor of 101, which we've all discussed is separate from you know, mm -hmm. foot traffic for children necessarily, then we're back to the, to the, to the larger buffer that we've put in place, right? So that would, you know, downtown Smith River, we got this circle and we don't want things right on the downtown Smith River, but, but like on this corridor, maybe we're, and I don't want to use your business as you're talking about specifically, but on this, this location that Robert's talking about on, on Highway 101, that would open up that, that location, right? Because we all kind of agree to some extent that, that the location on, on 101 if it's 700 foot from a school, maybe that's still okay because you don't even know there's a school there and it's on 101, right? But, and then that, then that 2,000 foot or 1,500 foot buffer doesn't apply because it's on the corridor, right? So right. corridor access. That, that's a key that I think that the Joel was really mentioning the other day that we really could write into this thing that would, that would eliminate a lot of these issues that we're talking about specifically right now. We're specifically talking about right now there's a perfect business on 101, but it's in a circle. Yeah, right? simple simplifies that process very simply you still keep the thousand foot or whatever it is between businesses mm -hmm. um, and know, then and I hate this RFP process personally because of the whole thing we talked about nepotism right. whatever it is that, that helps you right. select these businesses right but these circles and not all that stuff it, it it spreads it out right? right and I don't know legality if there's I mean it didn't sound like Joel was hot on having different numbers for different outfits or existing ones but we don't have very many existing ones so it may not be the end of the world to say that we we actually do write a different setback for existing stuff i don't know if that's real but since we have so few that may be a workable solution I really like the idea. yeah yeah i and mean truthfully if we look at existing patty's pretty much the only existing entity that would be staying in her current location so we really would only be dealing with one specific entity that would need that robert's you know potential new place because he has had delmart patients together you know formed for a number of years he's moving to a new location but i think with the 101 corridor exception and the corridor stuff that kind of would take care of maybe the issue with a church behind him which isn't on the same street you can't even see his place from it um yeah i kind of like that idea and i think that might be something we should we should really look into joel for that it goes without speaking that i like that idea <laughs> And then, yeah, I think Joel, we could encourage him maybe to just pressure Joel to figure out how to um, do that in a way that makes sense for our existing location collectives. Let's just work on getting all these points on the map. And then, and then mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how we come to a consensus on that necessarily. And maybe it's not today, but we get the map, right? And, and then these are concepts we've yeah. thought about. And it yeah. really kind of boils down a little bit to how do we put in this corridor access situation maybe? Because if yeah. we're gonna make these circles big, yeah. it's infringing on places that otherwise you would choose. So, right. Right. You I could think wait for council to talk about the corridor yeah. stuff maybe. I mean, it would be interesting to see how many, you know, school dots we have on the 101 corridor. I know there's the one right out, you know, in the middle of Fort Dick on 101. Um, you know, I, I'd be curious to know how many we have within our corridor system of 101 and 199. Um, it didn't look like it from, from the previous mapping that, that we had seen that there was, you know, there weren't too many. I think the only issues here are just in this map. Yeah, right, within the general outskirts of the city limits. Yeah. Well, it's on the other side of the river on, you Yeah, know. it was far enough away <laughs> from the commercial. <laughs> no, it doesn't yeah. affect, say, the one, you know, It touches know, a little bit of the commercial, area. yeah, but it's yeah. not enough. I mean, truthfully, in Gasky, there's like three buildings that are available. Um, you know, somebody wanted to set up shop. Smith River One those. affects a few of the property potentials on the 101, mm -hmm. right? Not, not dramatically. That's basically would inhibit to the, where the Gasky Market is in the Gasky area. Yeah, right up to looks like right up to the Burl space, and then anything prior that by Shishi's or the old Gasky station. You that's know, things pretty much outside of that 2000. Right. But then we're just having to deal with the youth center circle. 
correct. That so may or may not appear on that map. So I'd like to just come up with a good way. Um, we, we touched on a little bit, a way to get all these points, um, creating some kind of computer thing that we can all um, contribute to and add points. I, I'm trying to come up with a, a good logistical way for all of us to work okay. together to get so the points. So if we, we made a, um, a column or a spreadsheet that would include each of um, the different types and we would make a running list of everything that we have already on this map by address and then uh, we would share access to the working group to that and you could go in and edit it and add to it. Okay. okay. Perfect. Is, is there a youth center associated with the church in Gasky? I don't think so. We don't know? Okay. No, we'll I think it's just a church. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They're only open on Sundays. That new, the new one that went where the boat place was? Is that the one you're talking about? So the, the kind of newer one that went where the boat rental place was? Uh, the no, the, the church we're talking about in Gasky is actually on Gasky Flat Road. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's um, back behind on Gasky Flat into the, basically in the middle, if we're looking at this long strip of commercial mm -hmm. space, it's over in the middle in between Gasky Flat entrance and the exit. Okay, because there's one over on the right of this commercial, right on the road that just opened up that last That's year or two years ago? That's in Hayuchi. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. In Hayuchi? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Before yeah. the change. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot. There's, there's technically it's Crescent City for the stage. <laughs> okay. All right. Very good. So that sounds like a good way for us to get this, the bulk of this work done is, is finding these points and getting that as accurate as possible. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, but we can. Yeah, it, it, yeah. again, it won't be perfect. About numbers and I, I, yeah. My physical cap numbers are going to be so much harder to deal with than these circles. Sure. Uh, one of the things that everyone needs to remember, if you're talking about an RFP process and, and a limiting number which we, you know, of, of these retail outlets, you're going to be talking about a much higher fee, county fee for your p county permit because the county is going to have to cover all of those costs mm -hmm. when they issue you your, your license, right? Right. And so, by, by instigating this map and there not being all that, technically your fee for a business could be smaller. Because if you're gonna advocate for having two or three or four and go through this big drawn out process, it's mm -hmm. gonna require a much heftier fee for your business to pay to the county for that application fee. Mm -hmm. But that's just two cents on, on fees and costs. So I think this process of figuring out these circles could, can help the business owner in the long run lessen their cost. Sure. Um, Heidi, um, did you get, you, you reviewed my application? Yes. Did well, we had two, I believe, from you. Right. One for the commercial, our recreational one for the medical. And you get to review, I guess, just the three things I uploaded, Actually, right? Actually, we, what we get is something very, very simple that says, so-and-so applied for it, this is their location that may have an assessor parcel number, and then uh, essentially, is it in compliance or is it not in compliance? So you don't That's even get it. like um, a, the site diagram no, or anything we nothing, submit? Nothing. Do we submit like a site diagram which shows like the location of our cameras and things oh. like that and uh, landlord approval? And, uh, now, are you talking for your existing location just or where existing, you're going? Yeah. Okay, yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I was just trying to figure how. You know, I thought maybe you had a little bit more oversight right there, right at the back. No, not that. on these temporary. They, it's, it's very little, I would imagine, once they um, adopt the final regulations. Once there's a county ordinance license. in place, that would probably all yeah, change. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, exactly. That we'd have so more details. The, right. Yeah, we could probably get, talk for a couple minutes about taxes. Um, yeah, so just to cap this up then, like, we're not leaning toward a number. That's going to be a hard one for the board to understand. They, they don't get I why. I just wanted to maybe bring out a concept here. If, if, if we did have a number and a cap, does that also mean that we, as this committee, have to write the rules, the process, the da 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 No, I don't think so. I think it just means that the... the, the We've now put a parameter that somebody has to live with and abide by. And it could be as simple as the first five, and number six has to go buy one of those out, or, or you know, that concept. It, it's, uh, I, I don't really know. I'm just 
kind of food for thought on this. Just throwing it out here so that. I think that would definitely go back to the County Council Board of Supervisors what they wanted to determine, but arbit short of it just being. It, it would okay, be irresponsible. Open, who can us. click the button fast enough, right, to yeah, buy yeah. it? That, that yeah. you're, 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 yeah, it's irresponsible for the, the to, to not put so, some type of thing in place, whether we do it or somebody else does it. There needs yeah. to be some type of choosing parameters and like you know, it's like the city the other day was mentioning they're going to go through an RF. That's their plan is to go through an RFP process, and they're going to have a pretty drawn out. You know, yep. you got to meet all these requirements and and stuff and whatnot, and sure. so that somebody's got somebody's going to have to figure that out. And what that is as opposed yeah. to the I, I, I'm just kind of proposing this because you know at some point we draw the line on, on how far we go and, and I do understand that it might be irresponsible of us to just ignore that and put a number but, but you know it, 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 there's a there's different levels of um, effort that we can put into this and detail uh, quick, um, staying on this um, so the discussion that a board would have with the use permit process and if we need to have a cap or not or if there can be language in there um, with consideration to census tracts and that's another way you can do it so the, the board can't just say arbitrarily you know we just feel like there's enough and so we're not going to approve the sixth permit but if you had some metrics for it following census there's local census tract areas um, I don't know the details on that, but that may be a way to do it um, without having to, for us to decide what the appropriate, because that's also what I'm afraid of. I don't know if it's three or if it's, if it's 10, you know I mean? If it's, okay, so the other thing we all, I keep forgetting to bring up is the delivery service part of this. Um, ex stores can do delivery service, but you can also have a store that doesn't do retail, but then does delivery service. Should those be part of the cap? I think what we should do is just count. You got delivery, you got medical, you got recreational. If you're one entity and you have all three licenses, we count that as one license. Sure, but know? what if you're just doing delivery and you're not going to have a retail outlet? Are you going to be part of the, the cap, or do you get to go over the cap, or are you going to? Do you have to meet the setbacks between the retail stores if you're just doing delivery? Um, well, that sort of changes the dynamic. The, kind of what I was asking about with the medical and, and the retail and whatnot, but. Maybe it's a different. Specifically, right now we're talking about retail stores, right, with these circles, and so we want to specifically talk to when we specifically talk to pro like production, mm -hmm. growing, cultivation, let's say, or if we specifically want to talk to that part of that would right. be a, maybe a different, sure, different. We need different to kind of talk about it now, though, too. So if, sure. if, if we we don't want to make a cap of five and then later on say so, delivery is so going to fall into that. Yeah, that's yeah. If you're definitely talking right. caps for sure, and then but then setbacks also are maybe different too. Like right. all these circles. Were Certainly, different. yeah. A non-storefront retail that just does delivery would be the same as a manufacturing place or a processing place that doesn't have access to retail, and so you don't need the same, same setbacks. Yeah. Um, necessarily. But, but some setbacks would still apply. Yeah, the state still the state sees it the same. Like the yeah, they see it the but same. Large numbers don't necessarily need to apply to those. Places. Right. And, and I think we already earlier in talking to Patty, you know, decided that there was a little difference between you know the, the medical and the recreational. Mm -hmm. and the, so we, we kind of sure. already answered that in our minds. Right. So yeah, it's just I think that the space between them is going to take care of the number, and. Um, the other little details may change the numbers, you know, like not having a retail outlet. So I'm just, I'm afraid of picking a number that's going to end up being difficult for the board to deal with later on. You know, that's all I'm thinking of. <laughs> give them least choices as possible. So that kind of leads to taxes and what a lot of municipalities are doing is an adjustable tax that's left up to the board. Um, in some kind of range that's within a reasonable range. Some places picked really unreasonable ranges and they started with prohibitive taxes and then they had to come down in order to get applications. Um, so that'd be the kind of the first concept I'd like to, if we're going to switch over from this to tax. Uh, do we have closure on this with, with community? Not closure, but um, I, what I, you were asking for okay, earlier. I, what I'm going to do is we're going to put together a new set of maps. They're okay. going to have just points on them that are going to be color coded. We're also going to put together a spreadsheet that's going to identify all of our points, where we located them, and we'll share that with the group. And then you, between 
now yeah. and then when you receive it you can fill in the blanks then we would make the appropriate adjustments and okay. bring that back to the next meeting okay perfect closed okay. moving on to taxes yes sir they okay yeah. you do want, okay and what but oh, we can no. do that I mean, we well, can we do that later no. we can do that um i think let's work on the points that's not do we just want to do points because it the, the map's not going to work unless we have all the points so we can i think we need to get the all the yeah well i mean we can't look at it until we get the circle but let's we don't need to try to decide what size circles i think until we get the points we just stick with the numbers that we have and just keep yeah. adding so points. every single item activity we want a 2,000 foot buffer around it no no uh, um, just I, I mean the red ones are currently 2,000 keep that that code okay, going schools the, 2000 yeah schools the 2000. yellow ones are currently 600 Keep well we have two we did a 600 and a thousand for it doesn't matter the yellows. let's we'll, just we'll pick decide a thousand. that later it just doesn't matter okay so well, 1000 for everything else yeah sure 2000 and 1000 okay okay closing that and then um so the concept of, a, of an adjustable tax i think is something that would be good to talk about or if we just want to have because the market's weird it's changing it's hard to know that's why i was proposing the idea of do you want to wait to even do a tax because it may have to be changed later so it's popular with a lot of municipalities um one to five percent something like that like let's say we're talking about retail a sales tax on retail sales of recreational cannabis one to five percent something that's adjustable so that they can um you know have some room to be competitive or generate more revenue or whatever so, so, so two things um one is I, I think i heard you just say do we want to even tackle the tax thing is it an option for us or, or yeah it is it's joel thinks it's there's have time to. for it okay got it we don't have to, but and well i think we kind of do prudent. i think we need to the board wants to see it i sort of broached that topic okay. yesterday to get a, a sense of the, and the second to answer your question i would be in favor of, of, of a range in uh -huh. whatever categories and, and we just you know, start with some parameters sure sure so what do you guys think about a, a board adjustable tax in a reasonable range absolutely i mean i think okay. that's 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 a proper way to do it i think it gives, the gives them some like leeway also. and a, an ability to adjust up or down depending sure. on market you know okay and that's the specifically talking there a little bit directly towards retail just a retail sales, sales tax uh, yeah but we could do this to all of them um so then on on the other end of it i think cultivation is is obvious because there's a lot of examples for cultivation tax already can we go through the so just the categories of potential taxes sure retail and then cultivation and then those are on the two ends and then so in between retail and cultivation you have distribution processing and manufacturing which is different than processing totally processing different. is the process yeah. of actually trimming yeah. your flower <laughs> you're <Yeah>. learning that <laughs> now there's the whole manufacturing side processing can be multiple there's things there's the requirement yeah. that and retail facilities get the product that has to be in final sale form yeah packaged and pack it has to, if it's going to be packaged it has to be packaged before the retail sales gets it so the other license can't sell it any differently than when you're brought to it's brought testing to is the other license category where is packaging packaging can be done by a cultivator on site if they want to yeah, um, or done by a separate entity which would be a processor no packaging is not a license category because it can be done by multiple licenses yes, exactly just not by retail. Yeah, it can be other than the retailer. Yeah. Other than the retail. Yeah. It can be done by the retail until July. Right? Yeah, July 1st. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Eventually down the line, it can be done by all these entities other than the retailer. Yeah. So at this point, we're not concerned with packaging. No. Sure. So distribution. So some places have levied a tax on all categories. Um, the most popular is cultivation. Um, retail, I think, comes next after that. Distribution, I haven't seen, there, there isn't any model for distribution yet, so it's hard to yeah. tell if adding a tax of distribution just adds price to everything, and if it makes sense, you just use a distributor somewhere else if the lo local dis taxes mm -hmm. are high on a distributor. I mean, truly, the distributor is the tax and collector for the, the industry. The tax collector, so it may not make sense to have another tax on distribution operations just because they can be anywhere, so if it was 
too high. So processing, you could have p potentially maybe a, a small tax, but. Um, so the state right now, though, is, is going, the state doesn't have a specific retail tax, or they, they do, I can't recall. Well, excise tax, 15% yeah, excise tax, and plus sales tax. At the sales, at right, the at, sale, at the retail. At the retail. The retail facility. tax, sure. So there's a 15% excise tax sure. at the retailer, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's going to the state. Right. And then there's the state institutes at this moment a cultivation tax, right? Cultivation at the cultivator. Tax. Sure. And it's like nine, what is it? Nine. Yeah, it's nine a dollar, dollar amount per unit, so it's not yeah, a dollar and twenty five cents an ounce. It can fluctuate. Yeah. And so is there a flat fee in sh in um, with respect to the track and trace program is not quite all there there's yet. No f yeah, there's, there's no, no fee for that. No. There's okay. no fee for that. Well, so there's a, a membership fee, a purchase fee of the, yeah. the, the But so it, there's, a, there's a fee to the state based upon basically units that you produce, essentially. As yeah. a cultivator, correct. As right. a cultivator. And those are the only two places, right, that the state States is coming correct. in and pulling out what yeah. is quote unquote a type yeah. of a tax. Exactly. They don't take right. anything from the others, from the processing, distribution, or manufacturing. Yeah. There's and no so, specific state And tax. so uh, the point in why I said that was that it seems the easiest access for the county is to just piggyback on the backs of those and add small taxes along those lines. Right, where there's already a system for yeah. measuring. Yeah, where there's already a system for measuring where it doesn't require the either cultivator or retailer to really keep track of something different necessarily. It's just to add to. It's just adding to that calculation. So that same calculation that you're paying X to the state, you would pay Y mm -hmm. to the county. And at the retail level, you would add uh, one percent or two, but whatever mm -hmm. this small percentage we're talking right. about, it is into the right. into the just like you would a sales sure. tax and all that other I think stuff. The city of Arcata, they have a tax mm -hmm. on their manufacturing. They They're very proud of their MMIZ zone, and so yeah. I think the way they justify that is, is look at all of this help we're giving you to yeah. to get your business going, and yeah. so you can kick down a couple. I think it's percent. pretty minimal too. It's, is it a know, gross receipts? Tax? I think it's a gross receipts based off of your gross annual receipts. And they put quite a bit of effort into setting up the. Um, I mean, to the detriment of the manufacturing community that was there before. <laughs> but and down, the, down the, and down the line, that might not be a bad idea for this county either. Think, but in the short term, trying to get everything pushed forward and, and, sure. and, and quickly put onto these ballots and try to get everything sure. in flux and in motion by the end of the year, let's say, yeah. the retail level of, of retail and sales cultivation. and cultivation tax, those are really That's simple. probably it. Push forward and boom, and you're forward. It may be years before we even have a distributor. Exactly. What's the unit on the uh, dollar uh, on the cultivation tax? It's nine dollars and twenty-five cents an ounce. Nine seventy-five. So or it's a, no, nine, I think it's nine twenty-five. I might be wrong. The but unit yeah. is an ounce. Yes, one yeah. ounce. Yes, based on an ounce. ounce. There's Dried other, ounces. There's other metrics. Yeah, there's wet weight too. There's a dollar. Yeah, there's a, exactly. Dollar twenty-five if you're doing wet. There, yeah. There is the ability to get a license that doesn't right. sell flour. Correct. Right. It's selling uh, like essentially young plants. Yes. Well, that nursery yeah, but you don't tax on that. There's no tax on the nursery license mm -hmm. at the no, state level. There's no cultivation tax on the nursery license but because you're not actually producing a flower somebody, consumed. A eventually, product. somebody else is exactly somewhere down the line. Right. That tagged plant ID sure, yeah. would be taxed. Yeah. So you, you probably get, pay sales tax when you buy a plant. You know, you probably would. Yeah, I think you would. Um, you would have to, on, theoretically. Unless it's a wholesale. Wholesale, you know, wholesale, right. there's, 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 there's avenues around. But you're not reselling the plant, so you just have to pay tax You just on pay it. tax on the cultivated size of plant, the, the yeah, quantity of sure. product, you know, oh, Yeah, because that, that would be a disadvantage mm -hmm. to, to outlets because, you exactly. know, if you're not, if you're taxing a small plant from one distributor and not the other, yeah. but if, you know, I'm right. just going to start from scratch and grow a flower so I don't get the tax, sure. it doesn't really work exactly. that way. Exactly. So retail and cultivation probably look like the ones to do first, and then if it makes sense to do taxes on the other sectors in the next election cycle, then do it then. Question Maybe. again, um, fi uh, that fi you mentioned 15% excise tax imposed by the state at the retail level. That's to all sales, including medical? Yes. That doesn't exclude medical, I don't think, no, right? No. Nope. And it's really kind of, it's in, I guess it comes to the retail, it's on the invoice. Yeah. You know, there should be factored in the price, but uh, right now it's, you know, you just collect it on everything. Well, because it's collected from the distri the distributor. Is the distributor, yeah. distributor collects it from pulling yes. that. And so technically he would be giving the retailer the bill of here's your product and here's the tax and yeah, here's the so total bill, right? Mm, so not the excise tax. No, no, no. no, no the no, excise no, tax no, is yeah. not collected that yeah, way. It's got to be on the retail. Yeah, and then it's remitted to yeah, the it's distributor. It's remitted to a distributor. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, 
the excise tax right now, so items I've had in inventory before the beginning of the year, I need to collect the excise tax on it. Yeah. The distributor. And that's different. But then all the stuff that's coming in from licensed distributors now is on the invoice. Yeah. yeah. So because yeah. it has to. They be put the, the excise price. tax on yeah. there already. Yeah. yeah. They're not supposed what, what to. What did we say was fifteen percent or sixty percent markup? Yeah, but yeah. the the, the, the distributor's not supposed to be doing that. They're doing it incorrectly, I think. But yeah. I just need to hear nor there. These are accounting details that are going to get yeah, sorted out and, and like in the near future. So the, the only thing is, is I, I think the way I would understand any tax coming from the state, it's on the point of sale. So it has to be uh, if you sell something for a dollar, now it's a dollar. Yeah, except the cultivation tax. It's a tax on that's, your production. Yeah, yeah. When we're talking retail, retail sure, <laughs> retail. certainly. So it's not the yeah. distributor's dollars that, no. that we're talking about. It's sure. not the value of the product. But when it was 75 cents, it's yeah. the value of the value product, of the product yeah. to consumer. sold as a dollar. That's actually not quite true, though, because the excise tax, the way it's measured, it's not based on um, your actual sale price. It can be if you want to, but it's, it's a fair market on, value. No, it, well, Current it's, market value it's based on wholesale plus 60%. Yeah. I, I gotcha. They assume 60% resale That's the market. We've got two so you can, you can double it, you can go 100%, but you're only collecting the excise tax on the 60%. Yeah, market. There's there's a bunch of stuff in there about you can't sell it under the price that you basically paid for it to screw up the market. Yeah. The distributor is collecting, you know, the excise tax on on the invoice, yeah. and it will be factored into the price in, in the end of it. You know, so I mean, yeah, it's kind of complicated to figure out exactly, but it's uh, in the end, I'm not going to be adding a, a tax. It'll be factored into the price, sure. and then the distributor wants their excise tax right up front because they're liable for that. So, uh, so they're not giving you credit on the excise. They're, they're putting that right on the. That's the just invoice, the, that's just know? the choice of how the retailer chooses to display the price to the customer. Right? E, yeah, I mean, you know, there's. You know, for right now, it's just necessary. There's, you know, I mean, how else do you sure. figure out? I mean, it just know? depends on what you're putting a sign up that says, this is how much this costs. And when someone brings it to the retail, to the, to the checkout stand, and it's like, oh, now there's these 15% more tax on top of it. It's just, it's just a function of how you advertise your price, right? right. You can, you can sure. put it into your advertised price, or you can yeah. put it at the how checkout How about stand. state and county sales tax, which would be at the point of retail? That, that's, that's at the point of retail. Standard, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's standard. Yeah. So, so again, I'm just proposing this because we could tag on to that. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah tag on to the sales tax, right. and then that extra percent would just go directly to the local. Yeah. Yeah. And, to and the one state. thing to think about if the county decides to put a percent or two, which is what we've kind of been talking about so far. Or 10. Think, yeah, or 10. Or 50. Or 50, yeah. That this county actually has one of the smallest sales taxes in the entire, in the entire state. Right. As far as county mandated sales tax, it's lesser right. than Extra Humboldt. County taxes, not yeah. by much, but it's lesser yeah. than most other counties right. anywhere. We got some room. So your 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 multiple yeah. percent lower, or at least one, or maybe more than one percent lower than, let's say, San Francisco and some of these other <laughs> larger counties. Multiple it's, percent it's lower. It's two percent lower than 2 the Bay Area. Lower. I noticed right. that when I moved here. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So I guess part of that point being is that this county could garner a percent or two and still be on par with right. what a lot of, a lot yeah. of other counties are charging. Right, True. and so then you get into this you mentioned earlier the the the, the what's the license where the people you drive it to people's locations delivery, right? Just Just delivery, service. delivery service yeah. hey there, there could be a market for a delivery service that's based in Del Norte County maybe I don't know how that works but oh but the sales taxes are where you where, where your point of sale is yeah, right? yeah right it's not yeah. it'd have to come to you but yeah um yeah so, so where do we want to be with the number you yeah know, so the number I don't want to you know we could be competitive with Oregon. Yeah. That's the metric, right? We you mentioned that you high. mentioned variable percentages for the for the board of supervisors to be able to yeah. go in and be able to change without having to go back yeah. and maybe do a revoter initiative. Yeah, right. I like the idea of one to three. And that Me gives too. that gives yeah. a a good range where the board of supervisors mm -hmm. can pick one, you know, anywhere from mm -hmm. one to three, right? They can come in, and that can be their initial right. number, and then down mm -hmm. the road they can say oh, that's too low or that's too high, and they can start working one way or the other. I think there's room to keep it competitive with Oregon, which is the which is the thing we need to consider when how much taxes can can it bear to drive it to Oregon. And Oregon's cultivation taxes are, are super high; they're three times higher than here. Mm -hmm. So the cumulative total tax is actually higher in Oregon. So I think we might have a little room for for this yeah. for a few percent uh, without it pushing up the price. Yeah. Before you said your number, I had like two to five in my head, that's, and, and so that's just that's right in there. Yeah. 
And just so. give them a generality, say two to five, let them choose. I mean, sure. you know, let the Board of Supervisors discuss amongst themselves what they believe would be the proper tax within a range right. that we provide them. So let's, yeah, I, I, yeah, two to five, so one to five and is the yeah. range. In considering what, the, what, uh, what the, we would vote in, too, like this is all going to Yeah, I mean, we do have to consider that. You know, are the voters going to, you know, go for something like that? Again, they're the ones that are going to kind of take it in, you know, in the end. But, you know, I think if we stick within a parameter that seems, you know, reasonable then we shouldn't really have a problem with with the so. consumer because they're the ones ultimately going to vote for it i mean just for me two percent sounds kind of reasonable five percent sounds unreasonable but um um and yeah we should consider i don't i don't know that this will ever become a an initiative on the ballot and her, their what they put was two percent. So I don't know if that's going to make like a competition. You know, if we do have two things on the ballot, you know. Well, I mean, I, I guess maybe we should talk about this one a little bit because I mean, this is the reality and the legalities of where we stand. You know, if Linda Sutter does get the uh, the signatures together for the general election period time frame, we will have a voter initiative that will supersede anything that we put forth. Um, as recommendations or ordinances from the Can county. we just challenge it as illegal? Like, I could write an ordinance that says everybody <laughs> has to jump off the end of the pier if we all vote for it, but it's not going to happen because yeah. that would be illegal. I so. mean, I do believe that there has been, you know, I mean, we have discussed the potential for instilling some sort of voter initiative I, if there was a yeah, stalled process. Absolutely. I would say... There was no, you know, community input sure. here. And as far as what we're doing right here, this is inconsequential to what we're but, doing. But I don't think that's it is, true. Well, not if it gets on the ballet. It's yeah, not that's what I'm talking about. Let's just no. not waste time totally. worrying about it. Uh, Let's just stick to our mission. Which but I do is, worry. Which is the higher up. Right. Well, know. she's got 2% on there, so I just, the oh, only I thought was yeah. maybe 2% would be, you that know, works then, right? competitive with the right. reality. That's who's losing 2%. Close enough. You know, <laughs> yeah. so, 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 and then the other thing is it, we don't have to argue about the difference between 2% and 5% if we're giving a parameter. That's going to be determined by somebody else later in a different setting, right? There you go. Perfect. All right, so I think... So conversations anywhere between 1% and... Five percent of possibly that being a range, and someone else can determine if that's in fact the the range that they want to put on a sure. ballot initiative. Exactly. Perfect. And then maybe just retail and cultivation for now, and, and then revisit the other sectors if as as they even yeah. exist, if they, as they come into the county. It may be some time before we have processors, distributors, manufacturers. and manufacturers. Manufacturers will come s first, but. That would be the first thing to consider. Generally, on the cultivation thing, the, the, I, I understand why they would use a unit deal because nobody wants to put a assess a value until there's point. track and trace system. Yeah, yeah. And, and then um, what, what's roughly what's an ounce dry ounce worth? It amounts to about twenty percent right now at the best wholesale prices, and it's going to get worse. Of what? It's worth nine dollars more than it was before. It's going to be <laughs> the nine seventy five an ounce turns out to be about 20% of my gross on any unit. Well, and, oh, how do you get to 975 an ounce? Uh, that's, that's or it's 925, 975. That's the tax it's, it's from the state. It's 975 per ounce? Yeah. Oh, okay, you said dollar per ounce, it's, uh, or dollar yeah. per unit. I literally... Oh, no, dollar amount per that, unit that's amount right. versus a percentage amount. Okay. So it ends up being about $200 a pound because wholesale product is in pounds okay. which is 20 percent of a, of a top value product it depends I mean certain there's high value product that's 2,000 a pound so there it would be 10 percent but a lot of product is 500 a pound so there it would be 40 percent it's so it's starting no, to get two hundred dollars is 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 50 percent is 40 percent of five hundred dollars okay. yeah you lost me on some, some of that thing. it's a fixed number and as the price that you're getting Changes, it's a yeah, yeah, yeah. You went to pounds. Oh, right, right. So it could be a 99 percent. You know, if it goes to 99.999999, it'll go yeah. to like that. So what do y'all think in, in terms of this per? Oh, the cul ounce? cultivation tax. Yeah, they do it by square foot. So Humboldt does a dollar a square foot, yeah. um, and that's a lot of people complain about it, but it's like the lowest of anywhere. I don't think anybody's gone any lower. I think most of the complaints come from the fact that you know you're you're, you're being charged for land that you may or may not pull a product from right. if you do plant it, um, and I think that's the, 
biggest concern from the cultivation aspect of what Humboldt's doing. And it'll change, I think, when we get a robust track and trace system, then you can go to um, gross receipts more easily. But until then, it probably makes sense to do a uh, square footage. So I think so, but why not Humboldt's. Then, but why not continue with the state's taxing them what you produce? Oh, that's also, that's, we're talking about local taxes here, just yeah. for the county. I, I oh, oh. No, what I'm saying. Right, right, right. Well, why are, why are we sure. talking about square footage? Because we don't have a track and trace system, because there's no, I, I would just say I produce nothing. That's what I would say. You know, yeah, to get out of the tax. Except for the, the state is pulling. I tell them the same thing. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying, is yeah. that until there's a metric. Yeah. Well, I guess. I don't think but that's Good luck with that. <laughs> good so luck that when an inspector comes to your place, yeah. right? And so the reality is we are. It all went to destruction. You can go check my <laughs> destruction bin. That's how the game's going to work. Well, the reality is because there's no track and trace system, it doesn't mean that you're not still required to track and trace. What you're certainly, doing. certainly. But um, there's no one so, tracking. I mean, we I'm could saying. go to a cultivated weight system. Um, I think that's probably a, an easier standard bearer for what a particular person. How do you? I mean, I would I would lean to you, Blake, and your recommendations yeah, being in agriculture. How yeah, that works? I, I can understand why they went to a square footage or an acreage or something, that, okay. because you can't discriminate or you can't arbitrarily pick a number, right? You you you. you on one hand, you have to, right? How how big is my plot? Well, there it is. It's this big. Mm -hmm. It's more of a fixed number. Yeah, you and, and so that you can't manipulate. Uh, so, I, I, so you're I, either good or you're not. If you're not, yeah. Do it, it, else. So at this point in time, at, at this uh, level of uh, what sophistication in the marketplace, I, I believe that that cultivation square foot yeah. makes sense. I think that's what makes sense now, also, and then as the market changes, that will have to change too. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I think that. Um, Humboldt's is a dollar square foot for traditional outdoor. More intensive outdoor yeah. farming is two dollars a square foot, which may not be justifiable. I think in the future, the more intensive sort of farming is the only way it's go you're going to be able this to even be in the market. Like, um, this, it, this probably getting in. This is where we haven't talked about yet, right? And so it becomes <coughs> very difficult to, right, yeah. to institute a tax. <laughs> Yeah, on no something worries. we haven't even discussed, right? Sure. That's where it becomes much easier to institute tax on a, a right. unit of measure, right? That's easy. Sure. It's hard to say, well, outdoor, intensive outdoor, medium intensive outdoor, you know. Just do one. Mixed light. That's what I'm stuff. getting at. Yeah. Yeah. And then you could, yeah. so you could do one, right? Yeah. That would be way easier. That's what I'm getting at is that, like, I think we can follow Humboldt's um, measure in terms of the cultivation tax. They've talked a lot about it. And, um, and yeah, they do. They have the two outdoor ones, and then they have three dollars for indoor. Um, and so those will probably have to be a change for what's realistic. But I would like to see maybe just one. Um, if somebody's trying to do just a traditional single season outdoor, they may at some point need a tax break. But it probably we're not going to see much of that here. We're not going to see very many people going through all the expense of permitting, licensing, and everything, and then do. A traditional single season they're going to do multiple season outdoor and then and then so if you follow a humble standard of two hours a square foot then you are starting to get into the danger zone of um, having a big bill without having any production so we're right. let's say we're talking 5,000 square foot gardens that's some kind of what I'd like to see starting with um, for, for a maximum yeah so you, you have a ten thousand dollar bill before you know right up front and that could start to, I mean, like 5,000, you know, that's a, a perfectly run 5,000 square foot um, operation, you, you know, could gross 500,000, so you'd be at 1%, maybe it'd be 250,000 more realistically, then you're at 2%. If you make a couple of mistakes, now you're at 10%. So that's where $2 a foot may be a little tricky right in the beginning. Yeah. That may even be like an indoor right. appropriate And I think, price. isn't, isn't yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't Humboldt also, I mean, as we get into the more, you know, multiple harvesting techniques that a lot of, you know, growers do, mm -hmm. um, don't they do that based off of every time you replant is another corporation no, tax? Or is no, it a sta it's, it's no, standard it's the for year. annual? It's okay. for the year. Okay, Yeah, cool. and you can do, it, sure do whatever you can with your so garden. That's where the whole track and trace the, program will come in handy trying to figure out these sure. taxes and you can eliminate the square footage taxes and go towards the yeah. unit. Because the in intensity has a lot to do with your impact on the land and your labor, so it would make sense to have a lower tax burden if you're only working by yourself and, and you, you know, and your farming is less intensive versus if you have 20 people working the same size garden, 
then it makes sense, you know, but to have different. I don't know how, nobody knows really how long it's really going to take for the state to institute this track and trace program and get everything in place. But I don't think it's ever going to be perfect. No, <laughs> maybe. But it, the, the theory is it, is it will because sure. everything's going that direction. Um, There's enough money in I'd it. I'd be of an advocate of making more of a flat fee, mm -hmm. like a, let's say a dollar a square foot, and just that's broad for everyone. Sure. And, and then based on that we're going to eventually change to a mm -hmm. unit of measure tax. Right. Now, should we make it out an and or distinction, or do I, we want to not talk about I have a question there. there. Yeah, it, it, big picture, do you generally encourage, you know, in-ground planting or this two and three crop indoor? You know, what, what type of uh, growing do we right. want to encourage in our neighborhood? Yeah, in-ground two and three crops a year outside. Yeah, that's yeah. I mean, I, I think the so I mean, way to make it pencil out is it necessarily up to us to, to, to dictate to a no, to no, a, I, no, we're not talking yeah, about okay. dictating okay. Incentive, okay, cool. incentivization, I'm just trying to understand it, yeah. you know, incentivizing, and, and the reason that you know, I'm thinking, well, Humboldt has the one dollar and the two dollar on the indoor. Well, that's because you're multiple crop yeah, three, on indoor, indoor, or three, three on the indoor, three on the indoor, yeah, that makes sense. So, so then if that's true, then you know, a number between those two would maybe make more sure. sense sure you know that, that right. then applies in both situations part of, right. part, of, part of the basis behind those numbers and maybe I'm totally off base here is that the indoor product can often be More sold valuable. at a higher valuable right. price yeah. and so then mm -hmm. that person well, that's growing them in the middle in this mixed light situation yeah. if he can produce a product that's as high value as the as the indoor guy then he's he's doing yeah. well right now that's sure. that's it's, it's intensity it's in, intense in, intensity of land use though too yeah. indoor it's totally well all farmers benefit from doing a better job than their neighbor no right. if they're outside inside or whatever that's not our concern what we're talking about here is being fair to the citizens of the community and taxing mm -hmm. it appropriately sure. and, and fairly. Right? Right. And so, so. Sure. So from my perspective, like from, as a, from the cultivator's perspective and looking at the numbers and knowing what it takes, I, I would have liked to see Humboldt do 50 cents for regular outdoor and $1 for their mixed light, which is, it's the same spread. It's once twice as much as the other because theoretically you can produce twice as much maybe, but. So you're saying uh, yeah, or just pick one, just one dollar. No, I was saying just pick one, one dollar for everything. I'm in favor of just picking one. Yeah. Right? Uh, one, you know, sure. The humble scenario would be a dollar fifty or something. But then the thing is, it doesn't work for indoor. If we're going to talk about having this tax cover the possibility of an indoor cultivation ordinance, then the indoor tax does need to be different than the outdoor it tax. Twice. It should be twice. You think twice? That's right. Seen so standard around. Right, because like right with humble, it's indoor is not considered mixed light. No, no. Right. mixed it. light is a greenhouse got with supplemental lighting. I, I just yeah, yeah, got it. Yeah. So if we had a dollar for cultivation, <laughs> um, you short on time, Dave? You? Okay, okay. Let me finish this thought here. So if you had, um, so if we had a dollar for, for outdoor, and then you wanted to double that two dollars for indoor. Um, is that enough for indoor? I mean, it's like Humboldt, d Humboldt did from two to three dollars for like the spread from outdoor to indoor is three times, right? But the spread from mixed light, I think they overvalue mixed light in Humboldt personally. It's not just because you get two crops. What exactly is our definition of mixed light? Well, there's a very specific definition from the state, so. It's using more than six watts per square foot of artificial lighting. And there's another tier that's licensed differently for more than 25 watts per square foot of artificial lighting. I was just trying to, I'm so, trying to think in my mind because uh, I would do artificial lighting in, you know, in order to produce a crop that's different than just natural outdoor, you have to do it. It's just for day length extension. It's, di yeah, it's, it's for day length extension. It's not for adding light. It's for, um, yeah, right. So I would get around that, like as a cultivator, I would, I would apply for a regular outdoor license, not mixed light, stay below my six watts per square foot threshold, and do multiple crops and, and with you know light deprivation, artificial darkness, which is not the same as artificial light. Yeah, um, artificial darkness. I'm just there's there's a, a 
scenarios right, that's, you can, they wanted that to be considered mixed light. It's called light deprivation, artificial darkness. There's scenarios but where you can actually provide light under that threshold. Sure. Oh, yeah. So, okay. Public comment. Just one thing that's missing from the conversation is how are you going to measure those square feet? So for outdoor, is it the entire size of the parcel? Is it the area that metric? The state, state has a, Do you use the state metric? Okay. And then so indoor. So that'd be the easiest. It's the easiest. Yeah. yeah you, you make a plot plan and, and you have a, a specific right. place. There's and exempted areas and, and all that. And then if you're growing outside that, it's a public nuisance. You get a warning notice to stop doing it. Yeah, a $5,000 fine from yeah. the bureau. Yeah. From the bureau, yeah. So, but you don't get carted off to jail. You know. <laughs> don't seize all your stuff. So, um, and the other thing was, um, <clears throat> on distribution. When I was working in Santa Ana, we had a real problem with food trucks and trying to license, tax, limit, and because Department of US Department of Transportation regulates commerce on wheels, it became extremely problematic and there were lots of lawsuits that went back and forth and it went through just got tied up in the court system. So I would recommend shying away from distribution unless the state has a metric and then by shying away from distribution not try not taxing it you mean yes yeah, staying oh, okay. away from okay from the that's the wrong spot to tax even getting business licenses for distribution becomes problematic because everybody wants to regulate it and you know the feds say no it's our thing and you can't we've you know Anyway, set up somewhere else and then just, drive you know, just like our, just leave right. that alone and say you know if somebody has a permit from the state to distribute god bless them have a nice day and we're going to focus on you know cultivation and retail sales because manufacturing like a little gross receipts tax for the county on manufacturing yeah you know i could that? see that because you're in manufacturing you're changing the value of the product you're adding value to the best whole reason for manufacturing is you add value to the to the raw material. Well, also where the excess tax, tax yeah. is getting it, because as you've changed the value of it, then the excise, the tax that the state gets is more right. than what that product was before it got to yeah. the manufacturer. So, but just, you know, kind of keep in mind, you've got Oregon, and if the taxes here, however they're assessed, go too high, then people just go to Oregon to get whatever they're gonna get. Um, so you wanna find that sweet spot at the total at the end of the day, to the customer, what are they paying for what they're getting? And is it comparable? Because if it's way, way cheaper, we're leaving money on the table, which pisses off the people that voted for 64 because taxes, right? Because there's people that did. And if you get it too high, it's cost prohibitive, which goes against the people who voted for it because they wanted it, right? So you gotta find that, that sweet spot where everybody's happy, or at least where the smallest portion of the population is pissed off. Because right. you're never gonna make everybody happy. Right. Right? Get the smallest portion of the population mad about it. So right. get the largest right. portion of the population where they can, oh, okay, that kind of makes sense. I'm thinking local tax for manufacturing because it, it has impact to the county. Mm -hmm. Enforcement code has a lot of regulation. The building itself, OSHA requirements, employee requirements, there's going to be a fair amount of oversight responsible to the county. So that's where I'm seeing not so much with distribution, not even with processing, that's not, a, it's pretty benign. Yeah. It's not yeah, a big so, deal, but so manufacturing. Yeah, the direct cost, that's more of a permit and licensing. Sure, the direct fee, cost. That's a fee, more of a sure, fee, the direct but then cost. The, the, the county has to, has to, when they Im invite manufacturing and you're kind of creating a business environment. Mm -hmm. So like that, is where I think taxes are appropriate. When the county goes to the lengths to create a friendly environment for an industry, then it maybe is appropriate to pay a little tax. Yeah. And there's just one other comment on the thing that you moved off of. The, the reason for keeping it away from the places where the kids congregate, a <clears throat> big part of that is kids congregate outside a liquor store. Hey, buddy, could you buy me? Hey, buddy, could you buy me? Hey, buddy, could you? And they want to kind of stay away from that. So if, the, if it's not a place where kids are congregating, kids congregating in front of a dispensary kind of stick out to the enforcement person, like, what are you doing hanging out here? <laughs> uh, yeah, be like, what are you kids doing here? Out. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Yeah, well. Uh, community pressure yeah. is important. Yeah, so I'm 
pretty sure, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure the state's going to take the same tact on that as they did with the tobacco sales. Yeah, if they you, do mention specifically. If you, if you, you sell to underage, license. you're going to lose your license and just have a bad day. Yeah. So those are my only comments. Yeah. Thank you. Should we um, knock? So, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Public comment, please. My name is Marta Brundine, and I'm the vice chairman of the Food and Agricultural Committee for Talawa Daily Na Nation. And I'm coming into this kind of late, so, uh, you know, I, I can see there's a lot been going on for a while. Are there tapes available of past? Okay, good. I'll get online and start looking up all that stuff. My, my concern... Um, personally right now for the tribe is growing, getting growing, going. And I know there's all these questions about retail sales and all this stuff, what you guys are dealing with, but as far as getting a greenhouse going out there or just the land and getting some plants, how far along, I mean, is that permittable now or is that something that's... Not commercially, it is under the same model that we had for the last two decades, the collective model, Prop 215, and Senate Bill 420 kind of defines the collective model for cultivation. Um, but in terms of commercial licensing, like what we're talking about, that's, um, yeah, we don't have any ordinances in place for the county yet to do that. Um, so any of your, your pre-preparation for that would just be your standard um, building stuff, standard development stuff, just like if you were gonna build a, a greenhouse to grow tomatoes in it, um, you would need to, meet all the same type of permitting requirements. Not to say that some of those things might change specific to cannabis, but that's a place to start okay. is your, your normal building requirements. Okay, but so we could, in theory, proceed to get the greenhouses ready. You could apply for permits. So it doesn't mean that, the, the, that some requirements wouldn't change in the future for cannabis specific, uh -huh. Uh -huh. but you definitely can help yourself by understanding what the building requirements are, okay. building codes, all okay. of these kinds of things, so that you know kind of what you're doing. But I wouldn't spend money on stuff until Til. you have an actual ordinance, yeah. probably. Just my personal Okay, and that's what it. we're all working yeah. on here. But this it's year is the hope for getting, we're, okay. our retail is our priority now, okay. taxes, and then hopefully getting um, a cultivation ordinance by the end of the year okay. to allow cultivators to be able to apply for a permit or be able to make plans like okay. you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. It's not set in stone, but that's our hope. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank I you. It. Chair Davis, I have yes. to leave. Um, okay. Ellie Hoops, the Council for the Yurok Tribe, she has some comments, and I think there are things Super. that are probably things I also need to know about related to our maps, so I will be wa going back and watching that. Super. Thank, so, you. thank you. Have a good day. Um, we're coming in somewhat late. We're trying to get to be sort of in track with you guys. And I think that the cultivation aspect is also extremely important to the Yurok tribe. Uh, we, at this point, do have zero tolerance, and we're not planning on being involved in cultivation. So our interests come at it from a, a different position, actually. But what our concerns are are, are really um, things that are being addressed currently in the uh, Humboldt ordinance, which is specifically having setbacks for not only from places like schools, and I think for retail as well, we'd want those from cultural sites, things like that. My guess is that you're not, they're not going to be setting up retail areas specifically um, next to cultural sites, because I don't see why there'd be a market there. So I, I, I want to just bring it up that as we're creating maps in the future, and specifically to cultivation, that the tribe really wants to make sure that their approval is necessary on reservation which makes sense, I'm sure you guys would agree, but also that there would be setbacks from the reservation or from cultural sites that would apply to any cultivations. Um, the, that's where it would be more likely that there could be an impact. Um, these are obviously places that we want to keep as pristine as possible, and that's the reason for that. So I understand that's not directly the conversation today, but I wanted to bring it to your attention. And I've asked that um, the maps be reviewed by our staff so that if there are schools, parks, anything else that we can add to those maps, we will do so for the direct conversation of retail that you're having today. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. So thank Definitely you appreciate much. all the help we can get yeah. <laughs> forming these maps and making sure they're as accurate as possible. And I absolutely agree with you on the cultivation sense. Um, the impacts of cultivation don't stay on the property necessarily. They should, but they don't always. And so that's why um, 
any farms that have any connectivity to any watersheds, um, parcels that uh, border the, the reservation directly, these kinds of things for sure. Well, there's some ancestral lands as well where we right. will have cultural sites where we'll have more of an interest than other areas. And so just, to, you know, as we're going forward, we can look at what those are and we, I, right. we don't have an answer to that today either. Certainly. But I just wanted to make sure that that was sort of in your thoughts as you go forward. Certainly. And then we'll bring that information as far as retail sites for the ones that we have that we know about. Right. And another thought, I remember we mentioned, I we talked about this once before. Yes. Um, the state does um, mention cultural sites. It doesn't give the, the tribe the, the jurisdiction, but they talk about it in terms of needing to pay attention to it, having to get an archaeologist on site when you're doing clearing land or whatever. And so I think these are some of the same kind of guidelines that we can apply. Well, I would I would say that you have a uh, your. You it's not even a neighbor, but you know, a, a partner that yeah. is an expert in, in these areas, Absolutely and so right. it'd be the obvious go-to. Um, and we sure. can, if we can incorporate that, incorporate that where it is, Yurok, that would be great. Exactly. I'm sure that other tribes will have their own interest in those areas, sure. but for the Yurok ones, we'd be interested in having a role like that. And the tribe could probably help to with that process yeah. where a cultivator needs to do that. I, I, I don't know if you saw right. the emails, but we're c continuing forward as we uh, on. The, yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, but also, I'll be contacting some of the supervisors and we'll continue forward as, as we discussed before. Perfect, thank you. Very thank much. you. Thanks for coming, Ellie. So, manufacturing, do, oh, we're way over time. Sorry, everybody. Do we want to skip manufacturing for this time and just sort of look at uh, retail and cultivation only? in this one to five percent range on retail and then for cultivation we're talking about a dollar a foot and then maybe something different for indoor maybe so three i'm thinking one dollar and three dollars skipping the two dollar light depth thing which i thought was sort of a confusion um, starting with that a dollar for outdoor three dollars for indoor okay we should talk to together about prices and values so I, I you was understand in San Francisco the yesterday just telling somebody I had to hustle home and leave late last night so I could be here for this meeting and uh, like, you know what's going on in Colorado don't you and how devastating it's been yeah I do I, I'm aware and and so everybody underestimates the cost to the community everybody underestimates the cost to the community the environment everything right and so I, I'm just gonna leave us with that thought thank you Blake I think the big farms are what caused the, the big problems. Yeah, no, I, yeah, it's yeah. And Extra sometimes, you know, our, what we're thinking of it, you know, you see uh, uh, traffic accidents involving people with cannabis in their bloodstream, uh, fatal traffic accidents, and it goes from 8% to 12%. And so you've got a headline there, you know this is raised at 50%, you know, in this period. But then if you really look at this, the numbers, it's really just more people using cannabis. You'd have to assume that more than 12% or less than 12% of those people on the road are using, I would guess one fifth of them probably had used it in the last 30 days. And if you'd put 20% as the using adult range and only 12% were, you know, you start coming up with, with you know, really, you know, so you can construe numbers to, to kind of find the result you want a lot of the time, you know. Yeah. 